And within that matchup, a study of two quarterbacks, Peyton Manning and Brett Favre on display for you this afternoon. just keeps getting better and better year after year for more on the relationship between Peyton and Brett. Here's Pam Oliver. Hey, Joe, a lot of interesting elements linking Brett Favre and Peyton Manning. For instance, even though the Saints were awful when Brett was growing up in a small Mississippi town, not far from the Superdome, he still adored Peyton's dad, Archie. Fast forward a couple of years, and the two would end up on the same magazine cover. This while Peyton was a, a junior at Tennessee. Now here we are, Joe, two fantastic quarterbacks with enormous respect for what the other one does. We're going to have us a fun today. That's what we're looking for, and uh, welcome to the broadcast booth. Thank you, Pam. I'm Joe. That's Troy. That's Chris. And we make so much about matchups week after week, and we try to find the interest. I can't wait to watch these two guys slinging around. How about you? Well, I'm excited about it. I think uh, everybody's excited about it. These two guys really are NFL royalty, and it's rare that you get an opportunity to watch two great quarterbacks like this come together and compete against one another and if you look at the defensive teams for both of these teams they're both injured in the secondary so I would expect both of these quarterbacks to take advantage of a depleted secondary and throw the ball a little bit but Chris let's say this it's not just Brett Favre against Peyton Manning there's questions on each defense and uh, these guys both have weapons to use as well yeah and I think if the Green Bay Packers are going to win this game it's going to be because of the play of Amon Green when you're in a hostile environment like this, you're going to have to be able to run the football, take the crowd out, take a little pressure off of Brett Favre. And the Green Bay Packers right now, first and foremost, are a running team. Not to mention Edron James as well. You know, he's coming off the hamstring injury. He'll be a big factor in here, too. We remind you to check on how your fantasy team is doing. Text message 63504 on your singular wireless phone or log on to foxsports.com. Well, we were too busy gazing into each other's eyes to realize who had won the toss and who will receive the answer to that question that we ask week in and week out, the Indianapolis Colts. And they will start with it on offense. Waiting for it is Brad Pyatt. We are glad you're with us today on Fox. Pyatt from about the three. Got a good block. And a good return by Pyatt out across the 30. Peyton Manning will take that offense out onto the field. Six consecutive seasons with 25 or more touchdown passes matched up against Brett Favre in this one. A lot of mutual respect. And a lot of question marks for this Green Bay defense. Coming off a four-week against the Bears at Lambeau last weekend. Quick snap count, the pass wide open is Wayne, and he makes the catch. Reggie Wayne is brought down shy of first down yardage. Hawthorne on the coverage, a gain of eight. Of course, Mike McKenzie, the guy who a lot of people thought would be starting in the game today, got hurt during practice this week. Michael Hawthorne making the start. That's going to be one of the key matchups throughout this game. How are they able to cover Reggie Wayne? They got Al Harris going, Marvin Harrison. A big matchup on the other side. Second down and two. Two plays, two throws, two completions. This time it's Harrison a game of two, and it depends on the spot. And I think the Packers defensively are a little bit surprised at how the Colts are coming out. They were really anticipating after the problems they had stopping the run last week against the Bears that the Colts were going to come out and try and pound them with Edger and James. Yet talking with Peyton Manning, he said, uh-uh. He said, we're going right after these two corners. We think we match up great. By the nose of the football, it's a first down for the Colts. Flips it. Harrison. First down inside the 40. Three for three for Manning. Now this is where the Colts are awfully effective. You're going to see the great play action off the stretch run. That's their signature run. Marvin Harrison just takes off on a diagonal across the field. It's just speed on speed. 
he's able to outrun Al Harris. Tough duty on Al Harris to try to keep up with Marvin Harrison on that route. Eight of 19 on that throw. Here's another one from Manning. And that's tipped by Darren Sharper. Good play. And we go out to JV. First time today for a game break. All right, fellas, take a look. 27-15 Vikings lead. Rex Grossman with his team in the red zone decides to take it in himself. A six-yard run to pay dirt, but he pays the price as he sprains his right knee. He's started off. It is 27-22. Minnesota with 154 left in regulation. Back to Joe, Troy, Chris, and Pam. All right, JB, thanks. Some more injuries for Chicago, and they just keep trying to hang in there. the first time they got into the three wide receiver look talking to Peyton Manning before the game he said we've got to take advantage of a depleted secondary that's what they've done Reggie Wayne has stepped up last week he stepped up again here today early and they just can't have they don't have an answer right now as to who's going to be able to play man-to-man -man against Reggie Wayne well the only thing we know for sure out of this start is that Michael Hawthorne cannot run with Reggie Wayne, and Al Harris cannot run with Marvin Harrison. They're going to have to change what they're doing defensively. These two corners cannot keep up. Penalty flag on that extra point. Add to that that Mike McKenzie's not here because of a hamstring. There's all the talk about him potentially being traded. If this Green Bay team is going to win anything this year, they can't start trading Personal away foul, face masks by the kicking team number Hawthorne 71. No well blocking. Pull the mask. So another try coming up from Vanderjet, but this is a depleted secondary, and the Indianapolis Colts just shredded them. Five plays, five throws, five completions, touchdown. If they've got two wide receivers on the field, then Green Bay cannot match up against them, and Indianapolis recognizes that. That's certainly what we saw here on this first series. When Indianapolis then goes to three wide receivers, now you're talking about a rookie having to come into the game. And right now, Green Bay is just shorthanded. You talk about Mike McKenzie and him not being here. Certainly, he could have helped. But let's remember, he had been a holdout for five months, and he wasn't playing at the level that everyone's accustomed to seeing him playing at either. They also missed Big Grady Jackson in the middle. to help stop the run. And now the extra point because of the penalty is hooked. And another penalty flag comes down. Ed Hockley. Running into the kicker by the defense. A five-yard penalty. Retry. So when Green Bay gets a break, they get the penalty. Vanderjet misses the extra point. They give him another try. Here's a penalty. Well, it's a good thing the clock is not running during the course of this extra point. The game would be over before they kicked it. <laughs> they got Horth Hawthorne, and I'll give Vanderjet some credit for a nice acting job. So yeah. he gets another try. Let's blow another whistle. Let's stretch this baby out. There's nothing more exciting than a good extra point. Right, this this say, is Troy. clearly... This is breathtaking. <laughs> well, another audience just joined us from an early game. Folks, you have missed one of the most breathtaking extra point tries in the history of the NFL. After two consecutive penalties, one that took an extra point away, one that gave Vanderjet another chance, Mike makes good on the second opportunity, actually his third. There's the penalty. And it's seven nothing. The Colts on top. And if you're just joining us, Indianapolis got the opening kickoff, and they went five plays, five passes, and in the end, it was Manning to Reggie Wayne for the touchdown. Well, you can see the safety, Mark Roman, number 23. They're in man. He comes out of the middle and bites on it. It just opens up the entire middle of the field. Michael Hawthorne playing outside leverage on Reggie Wayne and. 
Then it's just a foot race and whether or not Peyton Manning puts the ball on the mark, which he does most of the time. I don't know about you, but with this Colts offense, I'd much rather take my chances with Edgar and James with the hamstring injury and all that goes with it than with Peyton Manning and these wide receivers because especially Michael Hawthorne has a sprained ankle and Al Harris, he was essentially a nickelback in Philadelphia, a good player, but he is certainly not going to match up with Marvin Harrison today. So this is going to have to be a shootout, it appears, for the Green Bay Packers to hang in this game, and that would fall on the shoulders of Brett Favre. This is Whitley from about the five. Great open field tackle. The ball pops out, but they're going to whistle it dead. It was Jerome Sapp who was just added to this Indianapolis club who came down and made the hit after a 12-yard return by James Whitley. And here comes Brett Favre. The next completion will be number 4,000 in his Hall of Fame career. Third in NFL history with those career completions. This offensive line is fantastic. They've been together since 2001. That may not be the case next year. They have a couple of guards that may slip away. Toss to Green. Amon Green. A first down for Green Bay, a pickup of 11. And it was Freeney downfield to make the tackle. Well, they're starting immediately to the right side, which is what the Packers typically like to do. They run 70% of their runs off to the right. The Colts try and adjust by putting their best defender, Josh Williams, constantly to that side. But the Packers still able to pick up 10. First throw from Favre is gunned out to Javon Walker. And a completion of five. Look at the defense that Brett Favre will try to pick apart. Up front, they're not very big. Typical of a Tony Dungy defense. The linebackers with Cato June, Rob Morris, and David Thornton. And the secondary is banged up. And they should get tested today. Question marks around each defense as we play here in Indy. Second down and four. It's Amon Green. It's a first down for the Packers. And he's out to the 45. One of, the, one of the best pass rushers in the league is Dwight Freeney, number 93, for the Colts. But he likes to charge up the field, and the Packers are going to be able to take advantage of that. They'll try and run back underneath him as he tries to get that pass rush. Pass complete to Franks, the tight end. Gain of eight. Well, Bubba Frank's really becoming much more of a blocking tight end these days than he is a, a pass receiver. He was the, the fantasy player's dream guy for a long time because about the only time he ever caught the ball was for touchdowns down around the goal line. But fantastic blocker, probably not the receiving threat he once was. Second down and two. Far trips, goes down, and a big loss on the play. There was pressure by Freeney and Favre. Ends up losing 10. Well, and there for a minute, it looked like Tony Fisher was going to be able to pick up Dwight Freeney and that Brett Favre was going to be able to get away. Again, Dwight Freeney with the outside speed rush. You see Tony Fisher 40 go down low, but Brett just loses his balance. It looked like looked like their Mark Tauscher might have clipped his heel, and that's why he lost his balance and fell. Good job by Tony Fisher, at least coming out and putting the block on Dwight Freeney. Third down and 11. Just got it away. Far slings it. Passes caught for a first down. Donald Driver. Let's go to JB for a game break. Hey, Joe, the Rams have gone ahead 25-22 on a Mark Bolger 19-yard TD run with 28 seconds left. But the Saints battle back a field goal by John Carney, 38-yarder. That knocks it up. We are in OT, New Orleans and St. Louis. Back to Joe Buck. JB, thanks. First down for the Packers. Amon Green. 
gets it inside the 40. Game of four. Good. I think. I think what we've seen a good job of so far by Green Bay is they've been very balanced in how they've attacked Indianapolis on this first series. They come out with a couple of runs early with Amon Green. They open it up a little bit, which I really think Brett Favre wants to do that. In talking with him, I think he's gotten a little frustrated that they haven't opened up the offense a little bit more. And off is to Green. He tries the left side, and he is brought down at the 37, a gain of three. Nelson on the stop. Of course, Amon Green starting off so well this season. Both games over 100 yards, but he's also had two fumbles, one in each of the two games. The one last week against the Bears, I thought really cost the Packers the game. Minnesota holds off Chicago. Atlanta holds off Arizona. The Giants are 2-1. Third and four. That's Walker all alone. Javon Walker is in for the touchdown there are no flags first it was peyton manning going five for five getting seven on the board for the colts and now the veteran Favre answers with a touchdown throw to walker you got javon walker on jason david a rookie and he doesn't get his hands on him at all Safety's not over to get on the, over the top, but that was all on Jason David. And if he's going to be out there on an island, they have got to try to get him some help with some safeties. Almost had to be a blown coverage, don't you think, Troy? It almost looked like Jason David thought he had safety help and just let him essentially go off the ball and then at the last second turn and run. He got a bad hit, missed some practice this week, and just looked like somebody blew that coverage. It's a 7-7 game. Say this for Brett Favre, he is starting now with this receiving core to have some weapons around him to really help out in the passing game. You can talk about Amon Green and he's the focus of this offense, but Favre has had to wait a long time to have the likes of Javon Walker and Donald Driver and Ferguson around him to throw to. I think he's got a solid group, Joe. I don't think there's any question about that. He likes his group of receivers. This is a, a group of receivers that go out and work hard each and every day. They show up on Sundays. They run good routes. He's got good speed, and I know that there was a part of Brett Favre, I think, coming into this game that was that was hoping it would become somewhat of a shootout. I think he feels very good about his wide receiver group going up against this secondary and what they're capable of doing. If you get them into the three wides and you make some of these rookies get on the field, whether that's Indianapolis's rookies in the secondary or Green Bay's rookies in the secondary, as a quarterback, you can't ask for anything more when you've got a veteran receiver going up against them and they've got to try to in my opinion both of these defenses have got to try to start playing pass coverage and just take their chances on letting these teams run the ball 839 remaining in the first quarter and Longwell kicks it short Pyatt from outside the 10 Gets hit and thrown out of bounds, shy of the 30. If you are just joining us, it was a pretty throw. Both touchdown throws, 36 yards. The first one came from Manning to Reggie Wayne. And it was Michael Hawthorne who we beat to get it into the end zone. The flag came in back near the line of scrimmage on the kickoff and the new rule is they could tack on five yards from the end of the run back which they may do they're in pretty good field position or they could make green bay kick it away again we'll see what the choice is Outside by the kicking team number 24 the five yard penalty re-kick so they're going to make green bay kick again and hope that Pyatt has a better return For those of you interested in NFL records, Brett Favre just moved up one more consecutive games with a touchdown pass. Unitas set the standard with 47. Brett Favre has now tied Dave Craig with his 28th, and it didn't take him long. Pretty remarkable. Johnny Unitas in the era where they really weren't throwing the ball every down and all the rules that really benefit the offense. 
weren't in place for him to have 47 straight amazing record. Start to see these finals roll in. One of them, Jacksonville winning again, and they had to drive down the field against Tennessee to win it, and they did it. In Tennessee, it's amazing. They won to the last second at Buffalo, a 7-6 game where they got a little help from a fumble at the end of that game against Denver, and they're 3-0. Real short kick, and this is Mungro taking it on the run, and James is out across the 40, so the Colts made the right decision. They get better field position after this last run back of 18 yards. And we look at the offensive line, anchored by Jeff Saturday in the middle, a street-free agent. The guy who directs this offensive line, Howard Mudd, deserves a lot of credit for the job he's done with this group. Edger and James, a second-degree mild tear in his hamstring last week in the win at Tennessee, but he's okay to go. And that has surprised some of the Colts. Still haven't run it. This pass is caught by Wayne, and he was wide open. And Hawthorne was the one who got up to him to touch him late. Well, you can tell that Michael Hawthorne, he certainly respects the speed of Reggie Wayne. He knows what happened to him the last time he caught the ball. Just watch. I mean, Michael Hawthorne's cluing in on the quarterback, but he just keeps bailing out. And unless they try to roll and give him safety help, it's pretty obvious that Michael Hawthorne's not comfortable trying to cover Reggie Wayne. Down Indianapolis and swung out to Stokely. And he has another first down. Let me ask you this, Troy. How much did you love it when you had a secondary back on their heels? You can see it in their eyes. You know Green Bay is just ripe for the picking. Hey, you know it. You know it, Joe. You're absolutely right. I mean, as a quarterback, you sense when you've got a little fear in these defensive backs. And right now, that's the case. And you, know, you talk about trying to stop the run, and everybody wants to do that, do that, but big plays are what create points, and typically that comes in the passing game. If they don't get some help, there's going to be a lot of points scored here today. They said Stokely stepped out after a nine-yard gain. So they just complete another to Reggie Wayne for a first down inside the 30. The defense for the Green Bay Packers, they are missing Grady Jackson and his backup, James Lee. So they have Hunt and Nose Tackle at the start. Cullen Jenkins starting at the defensive tackle spot. They don't have those big run-stuffing linemen. That puts more pressure on a smaller middle linebacker like Nick Barnett. And the secondary, the new safety is Mark Roman to join with Darren Sharper. They had their work cut out for him today. They still haven't run it. Pressure on Manning who fires. Harrison, touchdown. Kabir Baja Biamila got there a step too late. The pressure was almost there, but right now the Green Bay Packers, I don't know exactly what they're thinking about on the defensive side, but they're playing against this three wide receiver set with a base defense. Only four defensive backs in the game. They're trying to cover the slot receiver with the safety. They're playing one on one on the outside. They can't run with these guys. They've got to play pass first. They're still up there in run formations. What a great move by Marvin Harrison on the double move against a veteran corner in Al Harris. I know Green Bay felt comfortable coming into this game that Al Harris could hold up against Marvin Harris. He certainly was not able to there, and it was because of a well-run route by Marvin Harrison. 14 to 7, Indianapolis. Peyton Manning hung in there well. That's no surprise. You know what else isn't a surprise? For the 70th time in their careers, this combination of Manning and Harrison just combined for a touchdown. And you know what was funny? Peyton Manning was telling us in our meeting on Monday, Tony Dungy came into the meeting room and he said, guys, we may throw it 50 times in this ball game. And Peyton Manning said, I almost fell out of my chair. To hear Tony Dungy say we might throw it 50 times, you know there's some matchups that we like down the field. And right now the Packers have been pretty slow to adjust. They came into this game anticipating that the Colts were going to try and run it. They have not run it a single time, and yet they haven't gotten that nickel back on the field, and they have to get that done. Well, part of what Green Bay has tried to do this year is they've tried to apply pressure. They want to play eight-man fronts. They want to be aggressive with their linebackers and their secondary players. And then what that happens is they got to play one-on-one -on, -one on the outside. 
certainly I would expect when they get the ball again, when the Colts get the ball, that is, that Green Bay, we will see some adjustments being made in how they're trying to stop this Colts offense. So the Colts haven't run the ball yet. They've had two touchdown drives. They lead by seven, and now Green Bay will get it back. Chapman. Antonio ducks when he got to the 20, and they'll mark him down at the 21. Prior to that last series, Peyton Manning and Marvin Harrison talking on the sideline. They got the ball, went down the field in a handful of plays, and it ended with this. Well, these two spend a lot of time during the week in practice, during the offseason, getting their timing together. I know Peyton Manning has a quarterback, has great confidence in his receivers, especially Marvin Harrison. He trusts what he tells him when he can get open on routes. Marvin was right then. On first down play action, Favre to the air. He fires deep for Walker, Javon Walker. There are no flags. There's another touchdown. This one belongs to the pack. The old guy can still throw it around. Just a two-man route that time for the Green Bay Packers. And Nick Harper seemed to relax at the end of this route like he didn't think the ball could possibly go that far. Look, he just settles back. He stopped even playing his man, and Javon Walker runs right past him for a huge touchdown. Guys, this one comes as advertised today. So now it's long run to make it 14-14. I guess it would be stating the obvious to say that the shootout is on. Yeah, and I don't see any signs that it's gonna slow down. And we talked about it coming into the game and how these two defensive secondaries are banged up and when you put two great quarterbacks together like this, and when they can throw the ball the way that they're able to with the weapons that they have at their disposal at the wide receiver position, this is what happens. And Chad Clifton doing a terrific job against Dwight Freeney is going to start over on the left side. And in order for Brett Favre to have this kind of success, Clifton's going to have to win that battle. That time looked like Freeney just kind of slipped and fell, and Harper might as well have. So, Troy, say it again. You talked to Brett Favre before the game, and, you know, this is now known as a running power football team, the Green Bay Packers. They're going to try to cram it down your throat, which they did in that season opening win on a Monday night against Carolina. They were frustrated after last week, and Favre, he just wants the, the reins loosened a little bit. I think Brett knows what all good offensive coaches and players know, that you can run the football, but you better be able to throw it if you're going to score points in this league. This is Pyatt. He gets out across the 25, and they'll mark him down at the 28. This morning, it was Packers star Amon Green. Now it's your chance to tell us who you want to see. Go 10 yards with TB. That's Terry Bradshaw. On next week's pregame show, log on to FoxSports.com on MSN. And choose from LeVar Arrington, Ray Lewis, Ty Law, and Warren Sapp. And then tune in later to see who the lucky winner was. Well, Bradshaw is maybe the only guy that's able to talk to Sapp right now. Not a lot of other media people are talking to him, from what I understand. Chris? <laughs> well, what would you mean by that? I just ask him. Warren and I are really tight. Why would they run the ball? Stokely! Manning dropped it in there perfectly, and Stokely dropped it. Wow. That has been the matchup that they are dreaming about here. They want Brandon Stokely working against the safeties, trying to watch these linebackers run with their nickel back right down the field. They get the perfect matchup, they get the perfect throw, and it bounces right off his face mask. How you can let Brandon Stokely run down the middle of the field without anybody getting a hand on him is beyond belief. On second down and 10, Stokely gets another chance. He's wrestled down by Sharper, a gain of five. Edger and James is saying, I rehabbed all week for this. 
Tony Dungy said we may throw it 50 times. Might be on the light side. They may throw it 70. Well, there's the penalty flag on the play. Green Bay. They don't know which end is up right now. They had guys going off the field. Three different defenders were late in getting off the field, and Indianapolis took advantage. A quick snap. And that'll be on Green Bay. And when you're in the no huddle offense, if you see the defense trying to bring their nickel package onto the field, Peyton Manning simply yells, attack, attack, attack. They do a quick snap. And then as the guys are running off the field, you get the free five yards. I don't know what the discussion is, but this is absolutely the way that the Colts have practiced this play, that if you want to try to sub and bring in your nickel package, they're going to do a quick snap, and they caught them that time. They were clearly not off the field. Question is, were the Colts set when they snapped the ball? Looks like it'll be against Green Bay. That was the first third down play by the Colts with 6-10 remaining in this first quarter. The defense had 12 men on the field, 13 men on the field defense. It's a five-yard penalty from the previous spot. Indianapolis did not substitute. Therefore, the action was legal by the offense. First down. I'll even give them 14 men on the field. Yeah, that's what I saw, too. A couple of coaches. Well, and as you'll notice, Peyton Manning, they do not huddle. He calls everything right from the line. He gets the play initially from the sideline and from the offensive coordinator, Tom Moore. But then he's able to change it and go to any play that's in their playbook. And he does a great job of communicating that, obviously, to the rest of his teammates. To his intended target, Marvin Harrison. There was pressure by Jenkins on the play. Well, they're going to move KGB around to try and get a little pressure this time. Kabir Bajah Biamilla coming off the defensive left side and able to finally get a little pressure. It's really the first time that we've seen Peyton Manning get knocked down in this game, and if they're going to have a chance, they're going to have to do that plenty. Directing gets Indianapolis a first down on a catch by Harrison. Here's a game break, and once again, JB. All right, Joe Bucking, what it is is John Carney, fifth field goal of the day. This the 31 yarder in overtime that snaps the Rams 15 game home win streak. Saints win it 28 25. Back to Joe Buck. So that snaps that home winning streak for the Rams, and after going down and taking the lead with under a minute to play. New Orleans back down the field to tie it and then win it in overtime. You see the team leaders scrolling across along the top. On first down, little pump fake. Stokely, and that ball is Hawthorne incomplete. They're ruling it incomplete that the ball hit the turf, and Hawthorne injured after stepping up and making a play. So we talked earlier about Hawthorne cluing in on the quarterback. He's going to allow Reggie Wayne to run by him, but then he comes off of it. He sees Brandon Stokely running the out route. You hope he's okay because of the injuries they've already got. They can't afford to lose him, but that should have been an interception. We talked about the uh, change in defense, and that clearly was a different defense. They finally fooled Peyton Manning. They were expecting him to go deep running with the wide receiver down the field, and instead he falls off on the underneath route, completely tricked Peyton Manning on that one. So they are checking on the health of Hawthorne, and I'll ask you after watching practice on Friday, how, how enjoyable is it to watch Peyton Manning run a practice? And he runs it with that offense, that two-minute drill they work on at the start of practice. I've watched a lot of practices. I've watched a lot of quarterbacks and how they go about getting ready at the start of a practice and throwing the individual routes and all that goes into it. That was a, that was a clinic. I, I have never seen anything like it for a guy who just completely conducts the beginning of a practice and warms up with the wide receivers the way that he did. The last segment of our viewing audience just joined us, and with five minutes, three seconds remaining in the first quarter, nobody's been able to take a breath. They haven't missed much if you just yeah. joining us. Every time the offense has grabbed the ball, they've gone down the field and scored. 
It is a shootout between Manning and Favre, second down and ten. They still haven't run the ball. Manning fires wide open as Wayne. He stays in bounds, gets a couple extra yards, and it's Jason Horton, the rookie, who was beaten on the play. Well, Green Bay just insists, and I know they're in a two-wide receiver look, but they insist on playing eight-man front. And again, to explain it to our viewers, that means you're one-on-one -on -one outside. Reggie Wayne now on a rookie, Jason Horton. And as long as Peyton Manning gets protection, they'll be able to throw that all day. Reggie Wayne down here raising his hand. He has inside off technique. Don't go deep here. Pass incomplete for Harrison. All of the touchdowns for those of you just joining us. For those of you who have been with us all day, it's fun to look back anyway. Manning's first one to Reggie Wayne. That got us going. Then Favre answered with a touchdown throw to Walker. Walker wasn't finished. Of course, neither was Manning. On a completion, the 70th time he's hooked up with Harrison. And then a long one from Favre to Javon Walker. And it's 14-14, and here are the Colts on the move again. Guys, I tell you, this is funny. The double move again, Eight. Troy. Bringing the extra guy up wasn't enough. Now they want to clear out center field. They will have, they will not have a safety in the middle of the field. They are completely man-to-man, -man, three man route. Safety comes up and bites on Brandon Stokely. Darren Sharper. Stokely runs right by him. The line gives Peyton time and Green Bay believes that they just got to get more pressure on Peyton instead of trying to retreat and play coverage. And I think the Packers missed watching Brandon Stokely at the end of last season when he lit it up at the end of the season and during the playoffs. You cannot play Darren Sharper on him one-on-one. -on -one. No Peyton, way. Peyton Manning telling us that if Green Bay keeps blitzing, we'll keep throwing. They keep throwing, and the Colts keep scoring. NFL Sunday is brought to you by Southwest Airlines, proud sponsor of the NFL and official airline of Super Bowl 39. Well, this place is jam-packed, and there are about 15,000 Green Bay Packers fans down here to watch this game, and they have seen 21 Colt points put up on the board, 14 by the Packers. Green Bay is about to get it back. Neither offense has been stopped, and it's Chapman from inside the 10. Antonio Chapman with a nice return after the 32. And we will take a break. Packer fans looking to cheer, and it's Barb who will try to make them cheer. It's 21 14. Well, the defense can only sit and watch and wonder for the Green Bay Packers. Wonder about the way they've played, if they can stop the Colts, and wonder how Brett Favre will answer. Penalty flag on the play, could be a freebie. Javon Walker, incomplete, and he was covered by Jason Davis. That was a good job by Brett Favre, knowing he had a free play. He was able to draw the Colts offside. Why not take a shot? That's exactly what he Offside, did. Offside, defense, number 93, five-yard penalty, repeat first down. There's David on the coverage. The Packers are used to seeing Freeney offside. All week long they practiced against their scout team defense with a guy wearing number 93 lined up offside at the start of the play to try to simulate the speed that Freeney has coming off the edge. That's the respect the Packers have for Dwight Freeney. On first down and five, it's Amon Green. Got a yard. Let's go back to the touchdown, and Peyton Manning obviously sees this blitz coming, and you say, well, how could that possibly happen? Right now, it's a very base vanilla look, but this guy right here, 
Jason Horton on the outside, off and inside. That says automatically this is going to be man coverage. You know the blitz is going to come. And Peyton Manning found the right matchup. That time going after the safety, Darren Sharper, one-on-one. -on -one. That was the Green Bay defense on the sideline. Hannibal Navy's letting his guys have it. Second down and four. Amon Green is brought down shy of a first down. Third and one coming up. Right now, Green Bay deciding to go back to more of a balanced attack, run the ball there on second down, try to get it into a third and manageable situation, and that's where Green Bay has been really good this year. They were good last year on third down conversions. They've been one of the best in the league over the first two games, and a big part of that is they've been able to get it to third and short. will cost Green Bay five yards. Chad Clifton, the left tackle, flinched. This one's against the pack. Before the ball was snapped, false start. Offense number 76. Five-yard penalty. It's still third down. And, you, and you, can, you can understand why, Joe. I mean, he's going against Dwight Freeney. He knows he's got speed that he's got to contend with out there at the tackle position. And if he's not moving right at the snap of the ball, he's not going to be able to get out of his set in time to put the block on him. Third down and six. Colts defense looked unorganized at the snap. Thought fires, and it's incomplete. Driver had it and dropped it. Boy, when you get in a game like this, you can't have those kinds of mistakes. Reminds me of the Bears game a little bit last week. Donald Driver with a couple of key drops in that one. Robert Ferguson had one as well. So Brett Favre just cannot be any hotter than what he is right now. His guys just have to start making plays. First punt of the afternoon, it's Brian Barker. How about Peyton? You think he can get any hotter? I don't think so. <laughs> drive punt, a good one. Hyatt. Just outside the 10. Will escape with his life across the 20. A penalty flag on that return. 13-yard return. And we will check the marker. Peyton Manning hovers back out onto the field. We almost can't afford to not score a touchdown on a drive. Their line will be down two touchdowns. Is coming back out. Yep, when you see the jersey start to pull, they're going to throw it almost every time. So that will cost the Colts. During the kick, holding by the receiving team, number 39. That's a 10 yard penalty, is enforced from the end of the kick. Indianapolis keeps the ball, first down. Oh, Peyton's just saying, oh, now we just got to throw a 90-yard completion. <laughs> Going to help his stats. <laughs> Colts get it back, and they lead by seven. Fox NFL Sunday is brought to you by Nissan and your Nissan dealer. By Visa, proud sponsor of the NFL, get ready for the game. By Universal Pictures Friday Night Lights in theaters October 8th. And by Sharp, Sharp Aquos. Suddenly, there's more to see. Nobody will surprise you on the list of early game headliners as we continue here in the first quarter in Indianapolis. Donovan McNabb, another big day. They are 3-0. Jamal Lewis with 186 yards on the ground and a touchdown. And Randy Moss with two scores. Starting from their own five. Quick pass to Wayne. And Wayne is out to the 14-yard line. Here's a game break. Once again, JB. Hey, Joe Buck. Sean Alexander playing with a bruised knee, allegedly. Already has one touchdown. Hauls in this second one here. That one from Hasselbeck. 17-0 Seattle over San Fran. Back to Joe Buck. Allegedly. What's he talking about back here? That pass is tipped and caught by Wayne. In the hands of Horton. Through those hands and to Reggie Wayne, everything 
is going the Colts way on offense. Yeah, Bob Slowick, defensive coordinator for the Packers, the last two snaps, he's gone to more of a two-deep shell and has given some help to the young corner, Jason Horton. That's what happens here. Jason Horton made a good play turning around, locating the ball. He was just unable to haul it in. Did you see where Nick Barnett, the middle linebacker, started that play? He was about 12 yards deep playing middle linebacker. On first down. Let's hit the Pollard line get the tight end involved. First down. You know, Pollard, he he's kind of become somewhat of the forgotten guy here recently. Back when Ken Dilger was here, he was a big receiving threat. They didn't run nearly as much three wide receiver sets as what they do now, but he's a guy who each year is going to catch about 40, 45 balls. Very good after he makes the catch. And he's also become a very good blocker. flag comes in late back in the area where Manning was picking himself up off the turf and a personal foul at least according to Peyton Manning looks like he may have gotten hit late personal foul roughing the passer defense number 59 helmet to helmet contact 15 yard penalty from the end of the pass completion first down but it is interesting even when the Packers are blitzing they're just playing a zone behind it they have completely abandoned the idea now of trying to match up one-on-one -on -one and play man coverage. And I think that's a good idea at this point. Boy, easy call for Ed Hockley right there with the helmet to helmet. Take a look at these two ratings. Wow. 158.3 is as good as you can do. I mean, that's as high a rating as you can have for a quarterback. <laughs> Peyton Manning's not too far behind him. To the 25. Well, you talked about Pollard a little bit earlier, and he's the only tight end in the league over the past three years to have at least two 40 yard catches. So he has been that big play guy. He was a basketball player in college, and just when you get him out there on the field, one on one situations, he's very difficult to bring down. This has been a display, a show. It's been phenomenal by this Colts offense, and they love it here in Indy. The end of the first quarter, after we have seen a total of 412 yards on offense by both teams combined. Indy up seven, back after this. Red Favre will stand and watch and hope that his defense can figure out a way to stop Peyton Manning. So far, that hasn't happened. Tom Moore, the offensive coordinator, Stating the obvious when he says Peyton Manning is a thoroughbred, but I'm sure saying something that would make you salivate, Troy. He gives Peyton Manning total authority to do anything he wants out on the field, and he doesn't second-guess a thing if it doesn't work when Manning comes back over to the sideline. Every quarterback would love to play in that kind of system. Unfortunately, not every quarterback's capable of handling it like Peyton Manning is, and as we can see, he just does a great job orchestrating this offense. Ladies and gentlemen, our first running point. Edger and James, a first down. The first quarter stats will knock you over if you're just joining us. Nothing on the ground for Indianapolis, but how about 247 yards for Manning, 134 for Favre with two touchdowns. And the total yards is <laughs> phenomenal. Well, at least Green Bay's been able to stop the run today. <laughs> Until they ran it. That was a concern coming in. They're on pace for a mile of offense so far here. 16, 1700 yards of offense if this pace continues. James. Penalty flag on the play, and there may have been a hold out there. Well, I think the reason that you're seeing the Colts now coming back to the running game is the Packers have made a change in here as well. They've gone to a three-man line, tried to add at least a linebacker. Holding offense number 78, 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Repeat first down. That's Tariq Glenn. Now, he's a first-round pick. 
You go down the line, DeMulling is a seventh rounder. Saturday, a free agent. Tupe Pecco is a free agent. And Deem is a fourth round pick. And this offensive line does a very good job protecting Peyton Manning. They really do, Joe. And they're not a real big group either. I mean, they get their they get their blocking done more oh, by yeah, angles. And other than Tupe Pecco, the rest of these guys, the other four offensive linemen, have been together for three years. That helps an awful lot also. First and 18. That's Harrison getting bumped along the way. No flag. Incomplete. And Manning is saying, you got to be kidding me. Yeah, that was pretty close. It looked like Harris was getting away with quite a bit of activity going down the field. Of course, the new emphasis now on you can't bump past the five-yard mark. And you're going to see Al Harris clearly trying to distract him. And why wouldn't he? Al Marvin Harrison has been running by him all day. In my consideration, that's a foul. Same with these fans here watching it on the scoreboard. Second down and 18. Green Bay showing blitz again. They come on the blitz and the ball is batted backward. Medius Hunt, who's getting the start today at nose tackle with pressure. Yeah, they've had some problems there at the nose tackle position due to injury, and he's making his first start at that position, normally a defensive tackle. And because of the injury to Grady Jackson and then last week James Lee, who had surgery this week, Cletus Hunt having to make the move. And really his job today is going to be just trying to hold up through the double teams that he'll face in the few situations, at least so far, that Indianapolis tries to run the ball. Creeping up again. Manning hangs in. Stokely looking for more. Brandon Stokely touchdown. How brilliant is Peyton Manning running this offense and how accurate is he dropping these passes right where they need to be? You're going to see that they're thinking Marvin Harrison is going to come from underneath here, and this is just a pick play. And instead of going to the slant underneath, Peyton Manning sees the safety hold up and play that slant, and all of a sudden goes back over the top to Stokely. And now we know why Tom Moore lets him pretty much do whatever he wants, My Joe. And I know Terry Bradshaw, during the pregame show, he ranked the quarterbacks. Peyton Manning was fifth. I think Terry may want to reevaluate that, that ranking at least after watching this first half. I was gonna, I was thinking he might have to go back out to the bar and get his laptop out and put some new figures in. This time it's Brandon Stokely. We've seen Harrison. We've seen Wayne. We see Stokely. We see a lot of points. We see the Colts up by 14. Fox and NFL Sundays brought to you by Ford. The next board Super Duty, tougher, stronger, smarter. By Singular, the wireless company that fits you best. By Tiger Woods PGA Tour 2005, Tiger Proofing. It's in the game. And by Miller. There's good enough and there's better than it has to be. Miller, good call. Wake the kids, phone the neighbors. You may see history here today. Already four touchdown throws from Peyton Manning. The record is seven. Chapman. Good return from Green Bay. Antonio Chapman is knocked out by Vanderjat, the kicker. But not until Chapman gets to the 41 yard line of Indianapolis. Did the defensive players miss the bus today, or did we miss anything here? <laughs> Chapman with the return of 49 yards. Now Green Bay in good position, but they trail by two touchdowns. After the longest return this season by a Packer, by Antonio Chapman, they start at the 41, and they hand to Amon Green. Morris gets in on the tackle. And again,
a gain of five. Let's go down to Pam Oliver. Hey, Joe, you may have heard a little something about Brett's troubles in Dome Stadium, but I tell you what, the Packers have come up with a very high-tech way to at least try to eliminate some of that noise. They have put electrical tape over the ear holes in Brett's helmet to try to reduce some of the noise in this very loud RCA Dome. Tell you what, it hasn't hurt. Well, we have heard plenty of noise. Most of the noise we've heard has come when the Colts have had the ball. A toss to Green running right, and he almost broke that. Tripped up at the last moment. A gain of three, David Thornton on the tackle. You know, Mon Green, a lot of a lot of discussion this past week about his propensity of putting the ball on the ground, and and rightfully so, I would guess. He, he, he does fumble the ball. It's well documented, but this guy's an outstanding football player, and he's a great runner. Last year, rushing for over 1,800 yards, probably the quiet. 1800 yards anybody's ever had in this league here's the noise third down and two green running right picking his way for a first down to the 25 and i really think the packers are doing the right thing here at some point you have to try and turn this into your style of play so far in the first quarter you know it's been all big bombs and throwing it down the field and that's exactly what the colts would love to see and a lot of times i know offensively when you have to sit on the bench for a little while it can throw you out of a little bit of your rhythm of your offense and this is what the packers do best they're a running football team and maybe try and change this momentum a little bit and if for no other reason just hang on to the ball for a while and keep it away from the colts offense that's a nice catch good throw from Favre into traffic and bubba franks Gets 11 and a first down. Good catch, good throw. Also, great job on the outside on Dwight Freeney. They pull a guard out, as you see, and they double up with him with Tony Fisher. And that's what, of course, Brett Favre working the other way. But a nice job by Brett laying that ball in there over linebacker David Thornton. Good concentration on Bubba Francis' part. Came in with only three catches this season. He is primarily just an extra offensive lineman now. First down is Nick Lucci, typically the fullback playing tailback in two. Uh, you give the ball to Nick Lucci, I mean, you may as well be giving it to Marco Rivera. I mean, this guy's basically an offensive lineman. He's 270 pounds. Of course, Mike Sherman said that he was going to play some tailback in the game today for a big man. He's got pretty good feet. But he's a punishing blocker when he's in there at fullback also. And the big reason why he's in there, Najee Davenport, Still nursing that hamstring injury, and he's typically the number two back. Now it's Fisher back there. Nobody jumped from the Colts. Setting up a screen. Fisher, and that was sniffed out by Bashir. Dries Bashir, the safety, came up to make the stop, a loss of eight. Dries Bashir, a guy that probably the best athlete back there among the safeties may not even have been in there, but for an injury to Bob Sanders, their top draft pick this year. But he's a guy that comes up. He, you could see that he was reading the audible or whatever it was Brett Favre was doing at the line of scrimmage. Didn't try and get after Brett Favre, read the screen, and came out and made the play. And there's a little pressure on Green Bay right now. We've seen what Indianapolis has been able to do offensively. Third and 15 here in the first half, but down 14. They know that they've got to come away with touchdowns and not field goals, at least at the rate that this game has gone so far. Timeout, Green Bay. Their first of this first half. Third and long when we come back. They were just checking the right leg of Peyton Manning over on the sidelines. So we'll keep an eye on that. But right now, third down for Green Bay. 16 yards to go. to the corner of the end zone. That's Driver, and he was overthrown. That'll bring up fourth down. Even the head linesman liked the try by Driver, who ended up getting driven into the padding down in the corner. You know, here's the difference. Indianapolis, when faced with third and long, they played cover two. You see these two safeties here protecting the end line, giving their corner some help. When Green Bay was faced with that same situation on the other end of the field, they blitzed them, played man-to-man, -man, and Peyton Manning hit the touchdown. 38-yard try by Longwell. 
And Longwell adds his name to the list of guys who have points today. That makes it 28-17. Colts about to get it back. Somewhere, Archie Manning is smiling. So is Eli. Looking at the numbers that Peyton has put up in this first half. There's still nine and a half minutes to go. And the Colts will take over after this kickoff from Longwell. Hyatt from the three. Hyatt across the 30. Brought down by Bonjou. Earlier, a hit on Peyton Manning. Bothered him enough to have to rub that leg a little bit, grabbing that knee. We'll keep an eye on that as we continue. Peyton back to work. Up 11. It has been four possessions, four touchdowns, and touchdown throws of 36, 28, 34, 27. The only time I've ever felt sorry for the chain crew. Those guys are down there panting and running up and down the field. They're going to have to lay down at halftime. The offensive leaders scrolling across the top of your screen in our 2004 version of the Fox Box. Who are you going to leave off that list on the offense for the Colts? Edron James, who hasn't been a factor, but he hasn't hardly touched the ball. Two carries, eight yards until this. Three carries, nine yards. And you just have to wonder a little bit why that wasn't the Green Bay plan coming in. I can remember Bob Slowick telling us in the meeting, the defensive coordinator, hey, we're going to stop the run and take our chances with the pass. Oops. They adjusted, but they may have adjusted too late. Second down and nine. Stokely over the middle. And it's big Cletius Hunt with help from Navies on the stop. Third down coming up. You know, and Brandon Stokely, he you know, he was injured part of last year, so he didn't get to give them as much as they would like to have gotten from him as far as playing time, but what a great addition he's been for this group. I mean, now they've got three solid guys. When you're talking about Marvin Harrison and Reggie Wayne and his development, now you put in Brandon Stokely, he presents some real problems. Will this be on? You could hear the defense of Green Bay. Offense number 18. And now Ed Hockley is going to be talked to immediately by the head linesman who may overrule that. Yeah, it looked to me like there was a offsides by the defense. It looked like maybe even Kabir Bajabia Milla, and then they've got the movement from the offensive line. Still third down. So they're going to get Manning for the head bob and jerking his hands. And this will cost the Colts five yards. Here's a better look at it. You can see the interior play. You can see Peyton Manning. I've never, I've never quite understood how they expect a quarterback to use hard count and voice inflection without moving your head. Yeah, that's a bad call. Third down and eight. Would have given Indianapolis a first down. No different on that. Cadence by Manning. Back pedaling as he goes, and it's incomplete. Wide open was Harrison, but he was a bit underthrown. That's the first bad ball we've really seen from Peyton Manning. He had a chance. Underthrew it, and he knows it. Couldn't step into that throw, and it came up a little shy. So Chapman will wait for the first punt from Hunter Smith. The numbers for Smith this season. Chapman from close to the 24. 
gets it to the 30 and just beyond. That's where Green Bay will take over. They find themselves down by 11. Brett Favre back to the field. Checking the hand of Marvin Harrison over on the bench for Indianapolis, and I'm sitting here with two ancient offensive players from the National Football League. And I'll ask you guys, you having any fun watching this track meet we're witnessing here? I don't think, I, I've never seen anything, I've never been a part of anything like this. I've never seen anything like this. Have you? No, it's really <laughs> fantastic to see them going at it. And it's amazing, though, that now for the Green Bay Packers, I get the feeling they almost want to slow this game down a little bit. If they can march one down the field here, take a little clock off, maybe get right back in it. They hand to Amon Green, maybe trying to do just that. Green gets a yard. Let's go back to that last incompletion and see if we can find anything with Harrison with the hands either on the catch try or sliding along the turf after the incompletion. Well, but you, you can see how fat that one knuckle is. And a lot of times when you get a low throw like that, you try and get your hand down underneath it and it one hops up into your finger and just jams it, but it won't have any effect on him, I can guarantee you that. Second down and nine. Barnes slings it, and it's tipped by Nick Harper. I'll tell you, both these defenses have settled in now, and they're starting to play more coverage. Certainly Indianapolis now respecting the passing game of Green Bay. Nick Harper here really doing a nice job of settling in and then being able to get back out underneath that curl route by Donald Driver, and that's what they're going to have to do. They're going to have to try to play coverage and then run people to the ball when it's a run play and try to get out underneath those throws when they're passing it. Third down and nine. Jumped off to Henderson, the fullback, needs to make a move and gets a first down. Well, that's really how you beat the cover, too. Whenever teams are taking away your wide receivers, you got to start working the interior guys. You start working the tight end along with the tailback and fullback. You see William Henderson come out on the check. There becomes a void, and the middle linebacker's got to be the guy there to make a difference. We saw David Thornton trying to match him up, but not enough before they got the first down. Backfield, Farm, a quick throw. Javon Walker. Plays over, man. He's to the 49, and then the play is over. Javon Walker has really become a really terrific wide receiver. We saw him coming on a little bit at the end of last season, but for last year, his 17 and a half yards per catch was best in the NFL, and he's become the deep threat that a lot of people thought he would coming out of college. Sort of a slow start his first couple of years, but really has picked up his play. Career high for Javon Walker, 129 yards already. White Freeney just checked himself out of the lineup. And far a big toss. Driver, it is incomplete. Driver had it. It's another drop by Donald Driver, and it was nearly picked off by Bashir. Now they go play action away. Brett Favre shows play action away. Donald Driver on the slant route. And there's a big crevice. And in the middle of the field, Nick Harper looking in. The good route tries to catch it with his hands. I got to tell you, not an easy catch. Brett Favre puts a lot of heat on the ball when he's throwing those short routes like that. But boy, Packers fortunate that ball wasn't intercepted. Once the ball's bobbled there and tipped up, Bashir had a chance for the interception. Extra tackle is Kevin Perry. He's on the right side of the offensive line. Third and two. Favre looking for Henderson. Henderson had to adjust. That was not an easy catch by a big guy, William Henderson. He came back and grabbed it for a Green Bay first down. Yeah, and I wasn't sure that Brett Favre saw him at first. Henderson just popped wide open here on the naked bootleg. Nice call by the Packers. Everybody look and run, and Henderson just pops immediately open. Brett just had to try and find a little throwing lane. Went around Thornton that time and picked it up. You know, William Henderson... Now in his 10th year, I mean, playing fullback, and you're right, Joe, great catch on that play, and plays a position where his career gets shortened, but he's had a good career for this team. Five minutes to go in this second quarter, and Amon Green is brought down by Triplett. Mm -hmm. 
Larry Triplett's a guy that they always thought could be a real good player for this team, drafted in the second round, and this season finally lost a little weight and regained some of the athleticism that they thought that he had coming out. You can see the speed coming down the line, and that's a pretty terrific play by a nose tackle. Kevin Berry back in there, and they'll line him up on the left side of the line next to Clifton. Where's number 71? Second down and 11. Far going for Walker. He's had a huge first half, but he's overthrown. And well covered by Strickland. Really great coverage there by Donald Strickland, staying over the top of Javon Walker, not allowing him to get by him. And, you know, Donald Strickland had to play some safety last year because of injury, and he was drafted as a corner. They put him back at corner this year because they lost their starter, Walt Harris, and the coaches in talking with him, they say Donald Strickland, Strickland is actually a better safety than he is corner. But it's just a position of need, and that's why he's there. Third down and 11. Far, quick throw, pass complete to Walker, but he's short of a first down by about four yards. It doesn't necessarily mean field goal here in this situation. When you get into one of these shootout kind of games, and it would be a 52 or so yard field goal, they want to take a shot here. Well, they're in that range. There's no question. If they miss this field goal attempt, they're going to give the ball to Indianapolis with great field position. I wouldn't be surprised if they try to draw the Colts off sides or if they try to do something else. Of course, Longwell is a good kicker for this team. Career long is 54. This is a 52-yard try. With the perfect conditions of the dome. Longwell looking for a little draw, and he hits the crossbar. And now the Colts will get that great field position. The thump off the foot. Thump off the crossbar. You know Brett wanted to try and go for it on fourth down there. Well, you can see the frustration in his face, no question. He realized that it was going to take a heck of an effort by Longwell in order to come away with the field goal. Instead, they give the ball back to Indianapolis. Great field position. And the way they're moving the football, you just don't want to give them a chance to get any more points. We look ahead to what's on our schedule on Fox. The Giants at the Packers will be there at Lambeau. The Eagles and Bears, Redskins at Browns. And then the late games, Falcons at the Panthers, the Saints at the Cardinals. Presented in Fox Sports High Definition. You don't suppose there's anybody in St. Louis that has recognized that Kurt Warner's 2-1 with the Giants now, do you? Well, I guarantee you. He still has thousands of fans in St. Louis. Stumpley gets it. Brandon Stokely has a Colts first down. And part of when you're going to try to play cover two with that shell, you got to put somebody over the inside slot receiver. They don't have anybody defending over Stokely. They give him a free run, and because they run that wide receiver swing screen, it's an easy completion and easy first down. And I'm still surprised that we haven't seen the Packers just come out in a basically a nickel set because the Colts really haven't done anything running the football today. A blitz coming and the pass complete to Harrison. Just inside the 19-yard line and we are fast approaching the two-minute warning, a completion of three yards. Nile digs on that last tackle, and we will have two minutes left the next time we see a snap. Farm looking at the pictures. Manning's looking for more points.
Coming up with a Visa Halftime Report, J.B., Terry, Howie, and Jimmy will have scores and highlights from around the league. And the Fox Sports ticker has up to the second scores stats. Two minutes remaining, and the Colts are inside the Green Bay 20, already up 11. Second down at 7. the catch. He's brought down short of a first down by Horton. In the last couple of series, the Colts have really been hurting themselves with penalties as long as they've been able to stay on Holding schedule. Offense, number 78. 10-yard penalty, repeat second down. And Terry Glenn that time getting caught with a hold, but that's really been the only way the Packers have been able to stop them. Trying to block KGB coming around the corner. Terry Glenn definitely in the back pedal there, then grabbed the right shoulder, and that's where the hold was. So that moves the ball all the way back just inside the 29. Packers really need to take advantage of this break. If they can hold them to just three here, you stay in the ball game. Second down and 17. Pass incomplete, but the flag comes flying. Reggie Wayne and Jason Horton, who has had a rough first half. <laughs> See, I just don't understand in second and long how you can play man-to-man, -man, one on one on the outside. You see Horton looking inside. I'm not sure what I don't like that. I don't like that call at all, Troy. I you know, I mean, the guy's turned around and the other players... You don't players like the stopped. call. He's turned around running into the guy. I mean, Horton's looking at the quarterback. Reggie Wayne's running right by the guy. I'm not sure what Horton's looking at inside in the backfield. There's nothing happening back there. Pass interference. Defense number 26. Not playing the ball. The ball is placed on the one-yard line. First down. It was an underthrown ball. You can't, you, as a defensive back, you just can't run into the guy when he's trying to make a play on the catch. But he was saying that he didn't turn around and try and make a play on the ball. He was turning his head back, trying to find the football as the contact was made. Well, if the emphasis this year is that we're going to call it if there's contact after five yards, I think it's pretty safe to say there was contact after five yards. They've gone at him four times. They've been successful four times. And Jason Horton with this short yardage situation sits on the bench but Houston beating Kansas City as they start off three. that was Hunt coming across on the center Saturday I just think to go back to the last play whether whether it was or it wasn't and certainly you can argue both sides of it personally I think it was I think the defensive call in itself defense number 97 after this is to the goal still first down that you continually put Jason Horton a rookie in a position where he's going to fail trying to cover Reggie Wayne yeah, I think you in my mind you have to give the defensive back a little benefit of the doubt as he turns around to play the ball close call First down and goal. Rhodes. Did not get in. So it was a great second effort by Dominic Rhodes. He got stopped short initially, almost was able to get in on the second push. Contact was made early. Right there, he kept his feet. He was able to get going almost. As, that's close. I think you challenged that one. That one looked like a touchdown. Going to review this one from upstairs if they get a good look at it. We're inside two minutes. It would have to come from the booth. I don't know how they don't review that upstairs either. Second down and goal. Why not? Another touchdown throw. It's Mungro. That's five touchdown passes from Peyton Manning. The NFL record is seven. You can go all the way back 
to that fourth down when the Packers decided to try the 52-yard field goal. And the Colts have turned that opportunity into six more, possibly seven more points. That's up to Vanderjeff. And it's 35 to 17. You know, and, and again, I think what makes it even more surprising that Green Bay has played the coverages that they've played is that Indianapolis, I believe, has ran the ball four times in the first half. They continually want to bring pressure. They want to hit Peyton Manning. They don't want to play coverage and help out these young defensive backs. And Peyton Manning has just picked them apart. But you can really only do so much for a kid like Jason Horton. I mean, essentially, all he was responsible for was the deep third on that last play. So all you, if somebody wants to throw something underneath, you say, okay, fine, I've got some underneath help. You just can't let anybody run by you like that. We came in talking about these quarterbacks. And we look at some of the greats. Fewest games to 150 touchdown passes. Marino, the quickest, took Manning 86 games. The fewest games to 25,000 passing yards. Marino, the best there. Manning and Favre are two and three. But really, with the state... The defense for each side, the question was which defense would be able to hold up under the pressure of either Favre or Manning. And so far, the answer is the Colts' defense has been good enough. The Packers' defense has had a horrible first half. This is Whitley. Out to the 24. More early game headliners. Dante Culpepper with three touchdowns. One rushing touchdown. Tiki Barber, a 100-yard day in the Giants' victory over Cleveland. And they will go into Lambeau next week, 2-1. and one. And Terrell Owens. That's working out okay, huh? I'll say. Wow. And they're keeping him happy by going to him time after time after time. And he has another 100-yard afternoon. Green Bay with two timeouts left. They drop it off to Green. Nice move. Amon Green left linebacker David Thornton laying down on the turf back near the 30. Well, and this would really help Green Bay. And I don't know that there's anybody who really does a better job of executing a two-minute offense than Brett Favre. But if they're able to come away with points on this drive, that'll really help them going in at half. Javon Walker and the Packers will spend the timeout. They have one left. It's a 35 to 17 game and the Packers you know you think about how they started the season I think we were all a little bit surprised the way they went into Carolina maybe not so much that they got the win but that they just crammed it right down their throats and came away on that Monday night game with a victory then they go home and they lose to Chicago you can say all you want about the turnover but now you you just wonder what this Packers team has on defense and if they have enough. Yeah, and I think that they're in a little bit of uh, limbo right now defensively. They came out in the first game against Carolina, blitz, 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 and they had success and everything looked good. And then the Bears burned them a little bit, and so they weren't quite sure coming in here. And then they try and do a little bit of that, play some man coverage, and Peyton Manning makes them look absolutely ridiculous. So now as a defensive coordinator, you're not sure exactly who you are right now. Second down and three for Green Bay. Backfield. It's a long green. Trying to get out of bounds, he does, but he's short of a first down. One other point with that, you know, there was some speculation that Mike McKenzie was left behind in Green Bay, didn't make the trip because he was about to be traded. The team he always hear connected with that, New Orleans, but he's down with a bad hamstring. That either one slows down his marketability on the trade market, or two, you look at the way the secondary has performed. If you want to win this year, how do you trade away McKenzie, whether he wants to be there or not? I think I might fly him in at halftime. Third down and two. Five over the middle as receiver Franks fell down. That'll bring up fourth down, and how cute do you want to be? Not too cute is the answer, as they will bring Barker out onto the field. If you don't get the first down, you're probably looking at more points from the Colts, so you have to give it back to them. And really, Green Bay's passing game, we saw it a little bit against the Bears, is, is just not that sharp in the down-to-down -down type of 
pick up first downs and because they haven't done it all that much Troy they really have gotten away from it gotten into the running game and they just weren't very sharp with it a week ago they came out smoking here they're just trying to get back to it on a full-time basis I'm just not sure they're used to playing that style Hyatt with a fair catch and they'll mark him down at about the nine and a half a 44 yard punt and the Colts are just happy that Hyatt had no trouble with it well, baseball next Saturday, the Fox Saturday baseball game of the week. Where will the Cubs be by the time they take on the Atlanta Braves earlier? How about the Dodgers and the Giants? Great matchups. The A's and the Athletics. Good games next Saturday on the Fox Saturday baseball game of the week. How about what the Mets did yesterday to the Cubs? That has to just kill you, that you last event. You can't lose that game if you're the Cubs. You just can't do it. You're up 3 nothing. Right now they're tied top the wild card standings and the Dodgers and Giants their final to come but this has been a phenomenal Colts first half a total of 573 yards on offense for both teams Peyton Manning took the field and the Colts just kept on running kept on catching kept on scoring and at the half they're up by 18 on Green Bay uh, we've seen it some today, but you see it all season long for the Colts. The working relationship between a guy like Marvin Harrison and a quarterback like Peyton Manning. And these two think the same thoughts, just like you and Michael Irvin used to think the same thoughts, and I'm sure still do. Well, yeah. I don't uh, know if you want to go all doubt. the way there. <laughs> i tell you what, it's, it's rare in today's game that you get a chance to play that long with a receiver, particularly a great receiver along with a great quarterback. And, you know, it's obvious as to why these two have been so successful doing what they're doing, and they both appreciate it. They're both hard workers, and they go out and they put up big numbers, and it's even more impressive when you consider the fact that defenses know that they're going to try to throw the ball to Marvin Harrison. It was really interesting talking to Reggie Wayne, the other Colts receiver, and he said it is just incredible to watch Peyton and Marvin work together. He said they literally now can change plays with eye contact. They can do it with a little nod, with a blink, with a wink, with something, and they understand what the other one is doing. And he said, I'm not talking about some simple little offense. This is a really complex, audible-driven system. It's amazing what they do together. So Green Bay will get it, and we'll see what their approach is here right away. Vanderjet kicks it. It's tipped and taken in by Henderson after that short kickoff. Decent field position at the 35, and let's say hello again to Pam Oliver. Hey, Joe, well, obviously, offensively, the Colts don't want to change a thing. Tony Dungy called me at half done. We knew they'd be down some defensive backs, and we knew that we could handle their pressure. He says, well, the number four back there, you cannot relax. Meantime, I asked Mike Sherman, how do you slow these guys down? He said, well, if I knew the answer to that, we would have done it in the first half. We tried zone, we tried man. We tried to do anything we could to get Peyton out of his zone, but so far, no luck. All they can do is just keep plugging away. All right, Pam, thanks. How frantic are the Green Bay Packers? How far away from the run do they want to get as they find themselves down by 18 yards and Favre is upset that he underthrew his receiver? Yeah, because it, when you get into a game like this, as we've kind of talked about, it, every play then becomes a big play and especially third downs. Third downs become big because if you're the Green Bay Packers, you recognize that we've got to score points and we've got to get back in this. And so every drive becomes that much more important. On second down, that's Gunda Walker. He's got a first down. He's had a nice game and he is developing into one of the better, one of the better receivers in the NFC. Tall kid that really has the ability to go up and make plays, but I think what's been the difference for him are these types of catches. He's now coming in over the middle, making the tough catches, getting his head down, being the all-around player. That's what you're looking for out of somebody and really what they needed on this Green Bay Packer offense. He couldn't believe it when he showed up from Florida State and caught that first ball, or at least tried to from far, but the kind of velocity he has on the fastball as that catch is made by Driver at the 45-yard line. Well, I think that's what we're getting ready to see, Joe. We're going to see Brett Favre go back to what he w is most comfortable doing, and that's getting underneath center, dropping back, and, and being the gunslinger that he is. And over the last several years, this West Coast offense has evolved into more of a running game, a lot of shotgun formations, play actions. In fact, Brett Favre said it's not West Coast. It's more Midwest offense. And 
now they're going back to some of the things that he's more comfortable with having to throw it now in this situation. Breeze Bashir is out of the lineup. So even more inexperienced in the secondary for the Colts as Amon Green gets a first down. It's now Corey Bird and Anthony Floyd back there as the Colts are down to their final two safeties. And I get the feeling that Brett Favre at halftime said, listen, guys, enough's enough. I know you want to run the football. I know you want to try and establish something. He's saying, look at who they have on the field defensively. Look at this secondary. Give me a chance to go out and win the football game. They've yet to run it so far this drive. First down at the Indianapolis 38. over the middle pass complete to Chapman out of a four wide receiver set gain of eight and what we're seeing because Indianapolis is playing coverage we're seeing Brett Favre have to be patient Indianapolis is banking that Brett Favre will not be patient that he'll get he'll want to throw the deep ball and they'll capitalize on that on this drive Brett Favre's done a good job of taking what Indianapolis has given him and right now that's been a lot of the shorter underneath throws Second down and two. Now they hand off for the first time this half, and they get another first down. But how many plays this season have we seen the Green Bay Packers come out in their four wide receiver set? Not many, because they've had so much of their offense and so much of their passing game come off of the play action because teams are stacking it up in there against the Mon Green and trying to stop the run. But right now the Packers are just saying, all right, let's go. Let's spread it out. Four wide outs, move it all over the field, see what we can do. First down the hand to Fisher. Tony Fisher stays on his feet. A nice run inside the 20. Gain of five. Yeah, I sense right now that Brett Favre really is going to view this as quite a challenge. He's been hearing for the past several years that this offense has been built around Amon Green, and he's the guy you got to stop. And Brett Favre's no longer the focal point that he once was. And I think he views it as a challenge. He right now wants to show that he can get this team back in this game. And he can still throw the ball around and do the things that he's always been known to do. That's not the only challenge here today. The other is number 18 on the sideline for the Colts as that pass is behind Driver. You know that Favre has got to get a little extra jump looking at what Peyton Manning has done and saying, all right, I'm going to try to answer you. And he's facing third and five here. Yeah, I mean, we haven't even talked much about what Brett Favre did in the first half because he got overshadowed by that man, Peyton Manning. I mean, Brett Favre put up some big numbers as well. You know, it doesn't have to be a pass here because this is probably four down territory for the Packers. They can come out and draw, screen, do anything and still go for it on fourth down. Favre is in trouble. Looking for help, he finds it in Fisher. And Tony Fisher has got another Green Bay first down and that was all Favre buying time. Dwight Freeney coming with the pressure, and I think Dwight Freeney's exhausted. He's going over to take a knee. Talked to Freeney this week, and he said, you know, what I try and do is pretend I'm a cannonball getting shot out of a cannon. I'm trying to sprint to a spot about three yards up the field, and when I see that tackle turn his shoulders like that, that's when I know to try and dip back underneath as he did there. How many times have we seen Brett Favre make a play like that? Tosses it to Amon Green, and he got... Zip might have lost a yard. Triplet on the stop. Of course, we've seen Tony Fisher in the game. He's the one who was able to pick up the first down with the reception. He's also run the ball with the what the Packers like to do is once they get inside the 20-yard line in the red zone, that's when they want to get Amon Green back in the game and let him be the workhorse trying to score the touchdown. And they let Tony Fisher pretty much be the back between the 20s as far as trying to spell Amon Green. What's this going to be between plays, a penalty flag? You know, the one thing offensively you cannot do is make a substitution and leave extra guys in the huddle and then leave late trying to fool the defense. Green Bay brought a couple of receivers into their huddle, and they're going to call just that. They took Barry out. They took Green out. They had two wide receivers come in, including Chapman, who's now going to go off the field, and they are going to call a penalty. Well, it's a pretty good rule. Ed doesn't have his mic on. 
Well, my best lip reading, I think he said someone came in the huddle and did not report as eligible. Someone with a number, an offensive lineman number that came into a position where he was eligible to catch a pass. Probably Kevin Berry who lines up at that tight end position sometimes. And it's a good rule that they have because what offenses started doing is they started trying to hide their personnel. Defenses, coaches, they want to try to match personnel and now they're playing on an even field when they can't put guys in the huddle. More men than 11. Second down and 11 as Indianapolis declined the penalty. Walker's left all alone and he has another. And the Packers make noise here at the beginning of the second half. And I really love what Green Bay has done. Anytime you have a defense that's thin in their secondary, what do you want to do? You want to put as many of those young players on the field as possible. This time they come out in sort of a bunch formation as they motion to it. And as soon as the ball is snapped, they just get lost. Corey Bird that time just lost track of where Javon Walker was. The extra point is good, and again, it's an 11-point game. An impressive opening drive of the second half. Brett Favre, I'm sure, said, put it on my Hall of Fame shoulders. Down the field, into the end zone. Walker has another, and the Packers can celebrate. Fox NFL Sunday is brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Proud sponsor of the NFL and official airline of Super Bowl 39. Javon Walker is coming off a career day at home over the Chicago Bear defense. He had seven catches in that game. That was a career high. Well, forget that. He's got eight already today and three touchdowns. Hyatt for the Colts. Gets it out near the 27. It's brought down by Nick Rogers. The Green Bay Packers needed to try to get something going in this second half. They took the kickoff, went down the field. Walker was left all alone. And Brent Favre, those eyes are lit up. First possession of the second half for the Colts. Starting at their own 27. Manning fires and it's dropped by Harrison. And a major change right now for the Green Bay Packers defensively. They came out in a dime defense, six defensive backs. In the first half, even with three wide receivers on the field, they were playing a base defense with just four defensive backs. So they've gone in at halftime now and said, look, guys, we know we can't cover the pass. Let's get our defensive backs on the field. Now watch Peyton start to run the ball. Second down and 10, and they do that. It's James. Peyton Manning in this game comes to the line of scrimmage with three plays. Two pass plays and a run play. They call the pass play, and he can check to a run play if he thinks the Packers aren't listening. Now anytime he feels that they're in coverage, he will call the run. But every time they start with the pass call, they're down in two. Packers need to stop. Looking left all the way, and it's Reggie Wayne dropped it. Wayne had it and dropped it, didn't control it after hauling it in, and it's three and out for the Colts. Yeah, and those were two good throws that were dropped in this series by Peyton Manning. Puts the ball right on Reggie Wayne's numbers, and he had it, but it got knocked out, and now they've got a punt for only the second time today, and the score by Green Bay when they went down and got the touchdown did put a little pressure here on the Indianapolis Colts, cutting the game to 11. Now if the Green Bay Packers are able to get points on this next possession, they further put pressure on them. That was nearly blocked. Hunter Smith got it away. Chapman calls for a fair catch. Nick Rogers almost got in there and got his hands up to block it. 49-yard punt. Pack has it back. One for one for Favre and company. One possession, one touchdown in this second half. 
They start with it on the ground. Demond Green. Tonight on Fox, it's a television event with the biggest acts in music and the hottest trends in fashion. Join Beyonce, Usher, and more for a celebration of style and sound. Dennis Leary hosts Fashion Rocks. Following the Simpsons tonight at 7.30 Eastern, 6.30 Central on Fox. Bubba Franks turned to grab it. He has it out at the 22, shy of a first down. How much has this Green Bay attack become a run-dominated attack? Favre has thrown for 300 or more yards only one time in his last 26 games, and he's getting close to it here today. I'll tell you, one thing I've really been impressed with has been the Colts' defense's ability to stop the run. This is one of the best running attacks in all of football, and yet on first down, they're starting to stop that run and force Brett Favre to throw the ball, which well, that's not a good idea either. Third down and four. Over the middle. Pass complete. First down to Chapman. Up over 270 yards through the air for Brett Favre today. You know, a lot of times you talk about running backs and how they how well they run the ball. Watch him on green, him helping out Chad Clifton on the outside. And if he's not there to help. There's a good chance Dwight Freeney's able to get around the corner because Chad Clifton certainly knowing that he had the back's help doing a nice job. Terry Bradshaw on 10 yards with TB asked him on green. Great run, great block. Which do you prefer? He said great block. He gets a good run here. Don't trust me on that. Let's hear it from the man himself. A good block or a good run? Good block. Yeah. I like to lay people out. He at least helped on Freeney and helped the Packers get a first down. Now it's second down and two. Well, we've seen one of each on the last two plays. Second down and two. Now it's Fisher helping out. On the rush and Favre just throws it away. Third and two. Good, job, good job that time by Nick Harper. It looked like Brett was going to be able to throw back across his body to a receiver that had arrowed out, and Nick Harper really reacted well to it. He made what I thought was one of the plays of the year last week when he stole the ball basically away from uh, Derek Mason in that game and really turned it around. Comes back and makes another one here. That U71 lineup is in there for Green Bay with the extra tackle Kevin Barry third down and two fake toss pass caught by Walker what a day career highs in yardage catches and touchdowns and he adds another catch and another 13 yards well he has really stepped up and now he is laid out well, this is going to be a huge loss if he's not able to continue to play. Having a huge game, a great catch there to pick up a key third down. And Strickland was the last guy to hit him, and he is still down flat on his back. But he just got a first down for Green Bay. They're right at midfield, down by 11. You are watching Fox Sports, broadcasting in 720p and Dolby 5.1, the world's finest high-definition standard. And we're glad you're watching. And Packer fans are a little happier now as they watch. They are down 11, but Green Bay moving the ball. On first down, they hand to Green. Trying to pick his way for yards, and he does. Nice run down inside the 45, a gain of six, and Javon Walker who had to sit out of play, will come right back in. You know, I really like what the Green Bay Packers have done at halftime of this game. They came out defensively, switched to the dime defense, got the initial stop. Offensively, they've come out to the spread out offense, and that's really working. Let's give Mike Sherman some credit here because he's got this thing turned around. Bashir has to leave limping all the way. This one for Ferguson, and he's not close, and they're going to call a flag. 
Yeah, you have to. That was about 10 yards down the field, and Strickland was still working on Robert Ferguson. There's the contact beyond five yards, and they threw the flag. Illegal contact, defense number 30. That's a five-yard penalty from the previous spot, but an automatic first down. Chris, to pick up your point, do you think maybe Jimmy Johnson called Bob Slowick at halftime? To he tell him must to have, do? and then fixed the offense as well. Yeah. Now, Bradshaw probably called the uh, offensive coordinator in there. The brain trust. Bob Slowick right in the middle as he's kind of gotten this thing at least Corral. partially figured out. It has slowed down. There's Vince Tobin in the background, an assistant with this Green Bay team, former head coach of Arizona. Delayed handoff to Fisher. Out of dancing and now penalty flag comes in. Was there a face mask? Was there a hold? Cato June made the stop. And the officials huddle up. Holding offense number 76. 10 yard penalty, repeat first down. That's Clifton who has his work cut out for him all day with Freeney. Well, he really does, and we've we've talked a lot about it. I mean, he's got a tough job over there, and Freeney starts him outside, and the last thing you can do is allow a guy underneath to beat you inside, and, and that's why the hold was called. And I think when you go back and you look at what Green Bay's been able to do, because they've been able to cut the deficit to 11, it's allowed them to remain a little more balanced in their attack than what they were able to do in the first half. Four wide receivers for the Packers. Take the handoff. Far fires too high for Chapman. I know Brett Favre throws a pretty good fastball, but Antonio Chapman really needs to come up with this play. You've got to find ways to make this catch, and this baby is humming. There's no question. Eh, probably a little too high. Let's give him the benefit of the doubt. My bad, Antonio. Carolina. I'll never forget the first Pro Bowl I was at with Brett Favre back in 1992. Sterling Sharp was running a crossing route. He threw that thing about 80 miles an hour from six yards away. <laughs> and he says, oh, he does it all the time. Second down and 20. To the sideline, another fastball, and this time driver hangs on. It's going to bring up third down and long, a gain of only six. Third and long, and what Green Bay's done a good job throughout this game of is they've been able to keep it in manageable third downs, and by doing so, they've converted 67% on third down, which obviously is what allows drives to stay alive, and that's why they've been able to come away with some points. This is a big third down here. Need at least eight or nine to even have a shot at a field goal here. Brian Longwell's long is 54. He's already missed today from 52. Favre swings it and it's dropped. Harper had it in his hands. And all he can do is wonder what might have been. He might have run all the way into the end zone. Well, there's a reason why defensive backs play defensive back. I mean, otherwise it'd be wide receivers. I mean, how many times do you see when a guy's got an opportunity to make a play? And I, I don't know. Harper here just kind of panics a little bit. He jumps when he really didn't have to. Might have even came off his face mask, but had a chance to get the ball and get good field position for his offense. One thing Tony Dungy told his team, with all of the games at Dungy, his pirate calls for a fair catch and take. All the experience Dungy has against Favre, he said, he'll try to stick it in places where he shouldn't. The Colts nearly come up with a pick. Green Bay's made it an 11-point game. Time of possession, all Green Bay. Indies run three plays, Green Bay 21, with 4.06 remaining in this third quarter. Key Money is back to work. So what Edger and James calls Peyton. He has a lot of money. James on the carry and Hunt on the tackle, a gain of eight. And that's exactly what I expected to see. Again, the Packers come out in that dime defense, six defensive backs, and when you get that many little guys on the field, you want to turn around and hand it to Edger and James. I was really surprised he threw it last time on third and two against the dime. Second down and two. Game of adjustments. And hand to 
James, and he's brought down immediately. Our Cal Truluck with a stop. Gain of only one. Excuse me, Joe. Sometimes the best best defense is a good offense, and you look at what Green Bay's been able to do here in the second half as far as keeping the ball. They've had two good possessions, one for a touchdown, the other one they had to punt, but they kept the ball away from Indianapolis. You talk about keeping Peyton Manning on the sidelines. Now they're faced with a third and one. And for as good as they played there in the first half, Green Bay's been able to control the clock and run off much more plays than what Indianapolis has been able to. They huddled up prior to this third and one. Green Bay had time to get a bigger lineup out there, and they hand it to James. And Edger and James has a first down. We look at the great trios throughout history, Unitas Moore and Raymond Berry. How about Bradshaw, Harris, Stallworth, and Swan? Jim Kelly, Thurman Thomas, and Andre Reed. And now here in Indianapolis, it's Manning, James, and Harrison. We didn't even get to look at Aikman, Smith, and Irvin. First down for the Colts. does. Manning fires and it's Reggie Wayne. Forced out of bounds by Horton. Big pickup of 23. I say Green Bay actually does a pretty good job of getting some pressure up front. They move the pocket, but Peyton Manning, take a look. He does a good job of stepping up and finding a lane right there. The pocket is formed. He finds Reggie Wayne on a deep crossing route against the man coverage. That's the route that you want on. Great completion. Edrin James has been busier than he was early. He gets eight. Barnett on the tackle. You know, it's just a weak feeling, though, when you're a defensive back. When they run those crossing routes all the way across the field in man coverage, and you see it's just a foot race. There's really nothing to the route. It's who can run the fastest, and all day long we've seen the situation. It has been the Colts receivers simply being able to outrun the Green Bay Packer defenders almost every time. Showing blitz again. James. Edger and James fights for extra yards in a first down. And I think you've got to be impressed with what Edger and James has done here on this series. The runs that he has had, he's had contact in the hole, and yet he's been able to move the pile and make people miss just enough to be able to keep the chains moving. But that's really the difference in my mind between good backs and great backs. You know, there are a lot of fast guys that can run around the corner and make big plays. The great backs can block and they can pick up short yardage and goal line and just make those other big plays as well. Four from Edger and James. Down to the 29. And that should do it for the third quarter. Peyton Manning was as excited to get James back after the slight tear in his left hamstring to run the ball as he was to block for him. That's the kind of complete back that Edger and James has become. One quarter to go. An 11-point Colt lead. That's the end of three. The NFL on Fox will continue from Indianapolis after a word from your local Fox station. Over 600 yards of total offense so far, and we look at the two quarterbacks who we highlighted coming in. The league talking about this matchup. And it's Brett Favre, 24 of 35 for just under 300 yards. And Manning, he has hardly been stopped. The times he doesn't complete passes are when guys are dropping the ball. Quarterback rating of 142.5. Neither one's disappointed, have they? Not at all. Second down and six as we begin the fourth quarter. he threw it. Penalty flag is down and it's Stokely. They're going to call him out of bounds just outside the goal line but we'll check the marker. Campman had pressure 
and they threw a flag just as Campman was getting his hands on Manning. Yeah, I think that one's coming back, Joe. And Manning's reaction would verify that instead of Holding first and goal. Offense number 78. Ten yard penalty, receive second down. They get Tarek Glenn again. Yeah, and that's Tarek Glenn, and he's had a few of those already today, and he's actually got some help over there also. You got the help hold there. He's trying to come underneath, and easy call there for the official to make. They ruled Stokely out at the one. It doesn't matter. The penalty brings the ball all the way back to the 39 and brings up second down and 16. A huge hold call against Green Bay on their last possession. This could be a big one against the Colts if the Packers can stop it. was Horton running stride for stride with Wayne. I think Jason Horton should have a little party. He finally uh, had one that didn't end up in the end zone. But he is a young guy in just his second year. And the reason that he's getting playing time over Joey Thomas, who many thought would be, is the number three draft pick. They said he's calm, that it, nothing seems to rattle him. And if today's action doesn't rattle him, I would tend to agree with that. Denver leading San Diego. Now baseball scores. It's third and 16 for the Colts up 11. And that's another one on Indianapolis. That's another one on the left tackle. Tarek Glenn is what it looked like. Got 15,000 Packer fans down here making noise and bothering the offense. Before the ball was snapped, ball start. Offense number 56. Five-yard penalty, it's still third down. They say Pecco, but certainly could have been on Glenn as well. The Colts expected all these Packer fans to show up here, but what they did was tie in a preseason ticket that they had to pay for in a game against Buffalo. So if a Green Bay fan wanted to come here, they had to buy two tickets. <laughs> That's not going to slow down a Packer fan. Third down and 21. Glenn almost got into his stance early again. This is James. Edger and James, Bouchu brings him down. Shy of first down yardage, but they are within field goal range for Vanderjeck. And that's a great job by Peyton Manning, recognizing the situation and knowing what you've got to do in order to try to come away with points. And watch Edger and James when he catches this ball. First he starts like he's going to try to outrun it to the sideline. Then he realizes get up the field, north and south, get as many yards as you can, put yourself in a position for a legitimate field goal attempt. But that stop now, even if they make this field goal, still keeps it a two touchdown game. So at least a bit of a win here for the Packers defense. This man holds a record for the most consecutive field goals made at 42. Snapped earlier this year in the loss to New England. This one is perfect. 177th career field goal. That's a new Colt record. Vanderjat has it, and it's a 14 point game. The three coaches on offense for the Colts, one's a player coach, that's Manning, and then over 60 years of experience between Howard Mudd and Tom Moore. And they have the guy that they trust to run this offense, and so far the Colts have put up 38 points. Edron James has been more involved in this second half, and Vanderjack gets it away. That's Ferguson from inside the 10. Robert Ferguson. Ferguson down the sideline, tripped up by the kicker, Vanderjet, and they're going to mark Ferguson down right at the 22-yard line, and it was the kicker that saved the touchdown. Great play by Vanderjack just to get a fingernail on him, but Robert Ferguson was injured, hurt his hamstring. They didn't think he'd be able to return kicks. They start back to the left and then cross all the way back across the field, and this one might just break it all the way. Sometimes when you're the last defender, you dive and just try and kick one foot into the other. It's exactly what Vanderjack did to save the touchdown. Kick one foot into the other foot, and the guy falls down. 71-yard return to set up the Packers 
at the Indianapolis 22. Favre to the end zone. It's tipped and incomplete. And it was Nelson, the linebacker, that got up, got a hand on it, and saved a touchdown. Chapman was the intended receiver, and he was open behind Jim Nelson. Well, they call it a game of inches, and now you understand why. Vanderjack makes a fingernail tackle, and Jim Nelson, watch him get up for a linebacker. That's going to be a touchdown. And the Packers really catch a break. That one wasn't intercepted. Tremendous play that time by Jim Nelson, the nickel linebacker. Second down and 10. Penalty flags before the snap. That'll be on Green Bay. Before the ball was snapped, ball start. Offense number 62. Five-yard penalty, still second down. They get Marco Rivera as the Packers try to turn a 71-yard kickoff return by Ferguson into points. Well, both of these offenses have had problems. Once they've, once they've gotten in a position to try to get points and stay ahead of the chains, both of them, both Indianapolis and Green Bay, have had penalties that have gotten them into long down situations. That's what's happened in this second half. Far fires Driver. Donald Driver with a catch. Tiptoes his way for the touchdown. A 300-yard day for Brett Favre. Troy, there's only a handful of guys can make that throw. I mean, to drop that thing in there on a shot with the safety coming over the top, this is just all arm strength right here. That oh, it didn't fool anybody. I mean, they're sitting there looking at the play. I, Corey Bird saw it coming. He just couldn't get there. He couldn't get there in time because Brett Favre turned it loose before Driver even got into the top of his route. Great anticipation by Brett Favre, and hey, why not? Why not? What a game. 17 times Brett Favre has thrown four touchdowns in a game. This time to Donald Driver. A great athletic move by Driver to stay in bounds. Brett Favre and the Packers rolling in this second half. Brought to you by Cadillac and the all-new STS. Breakthrough by Arca X, the world's largest fully electronic stock exchange. By PGI Fridays. Check out the new Jack Daniels flat iron steak from PGI Fridays. And by Michelob Ultra. Lose the carbs, not the taste. Seventeenth time, Brett Favre has thrown four touchdown passes in the game. That ties him for second all-time with. Johnny Unitas, Longwell looked like he slipped kicking that ball away, and it's Mungro taking it from the 20 and getting it out to the 34. It is definitely a day for the shining stars on display here in Indianapolis. doesn't make you move you need to wake up earth wind and fire we had a lot of fire not a lot of earth and wind in this dome though 38 31 a seven point game Packers seem like they were almost dunked in the first half and they have gotten up and made it again KGB got an unbelievable jump coming across the line of scrimmage and Manning can't believe there's no flag it, it look I can't I can't believe if, if he didn't get off sides, you can tell right there. He clearly, <laughs> clearly was off sides, and not, yet nothing was called. They didn't throw a flag. But Ed Hockley is still in a conference <laughs> to see if there's a penalty. Well, it was made worse looking by the fact that Dallas Clark didn't get out of his stance until a little bit late, but clearly KGB came early. Did you see KGB's face? I mean, he was shocked that they didn't even throw the flag. You give him a little who me? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> oh. 
There was no foul on the play. Oh. Please reset the clock to 12:51. Watch the hands of Peyton Manning. The defensive player was not in the neutral zone at the snap. He slapped Saturday. 12:51 on the clock. KGB came across and somehow they missed it. That was one of the things that the Packers had picked up on that they felt like that Peyton Manning just before he truly was going to snap the ball and not do more audibly he would slap the side of the center and it was one of the keys and maybe KGB that time saw it and jumped early. Second down and ten it's James with a big hole opening up in front of him. He got eight. Let's go back to the touchdown. And the completion to driver. Corey Burge right here. He's going to see this all the way. There's no question about it. He knows exactly where Brett's going to go with the ball. But the arm strength of Brett Favre, he gets it in there anyway. It's just remarkable. You don't see that play pulled off when that safety has that kind of an eye on it. Well, it goes back to good pass beats good coverage every time. Third down and two. Play clock at six. Is a cold snap it in the air and out incomplete for Wayne. And that was another touchdown. If Peyton is able to put a little air under this, he throws a little bit of a flat ball and he knows that he missed it again. Reggie Wayne running right by Jason Horton. And that's six points. There was nobody over the top to help him. And there's no question about who they're going after. That time it was four across. Everybody was in man coverage, including Marvin Harrison. And yet, even with Reggie Wayne over there, they were still going after Jason Moore. Fisher got there late trying to block it. Chapman takes it in from the 10. Antonio Chapman out to the 15, and that's it. Gardner on the stop. Guess who's back? Brett Favre has the ball again. The Packers down by seven. Antonio Chapman dislocated his finger on that last return was fortunate to just hold on to the ball and the Packers have it at their own 15 quick throw and a completion Javon Walker you can either trust me that he dislocated his finger or you can watch this and I would ask you if you're squeamish at all don't watch yep First down, Green Bay. One more use for duct tape over on the Green Bay sideline. Handoff is to Amon Green. And he has been bottled up all day. Game break time. Here's JB back in L.A. Hey, Joe, take a look at Ken Dorsey making only his second career start for this for San Francisco. It has the ball knocked loose. It is ruled a fumble. Now, the significance with under five minutes left, we all know it. San Francisco has not been shut out since 1977 against Atlanta, some 420 games ago. Back to Joe Buck. Wow. Thanks, JP. Second down and nine here. Empty backfield. Five fires behind Ferguson. We showed you Dries Bashir leaving earlier with a groin injury. He has not come back. And so you're seeing a lot of Anthony Floyd, Corey Bird, and this young secondary, which came in thin, is even thinner. Well, a lot of young players are growing up today and getting some experience. And what we've seen is when teams have, when these teams have not moved the ball, it's been more ado of four throws or drops than it has been covered. Third and nine. Huge play in the ball game right now. Rivera moved. The man across from him moved. And I think this could go either way. Ball start. Offense. Number 62. The defensive player did not get in the neutral zone. Five-yard penalty is still third down. Rivera claiming it was the guy on defense directly across from him that caused him to start too soon. So if you flinch, if the defender flinches but doesn't go into the neutral zone, it's okay. If he does go into the neutral zone, it's not okay and it's on the offense. And Troy, I have to go back to something you said earlier. I haven't seen this offensive line make this many mistakes in a long time. Now 
That was Josh Williams. He didn't go into the neutral zone. He came awfully close. Third down and 14 off his back foot. Chapman runs into the defender, and there is no flag, and the Packers' sideline is going crazy. Corey Bird had Chapman run right into his back. The ball was well overthrown, and there was no flag. It was overthrown, but the official on the sideline that would have had the call actually tripped and fell down and never, ever saw it. Watch the top of your screen. Let's see if we can see the official is going to fall down. And now we're into micro vision. Right up here, he trips and falls down and never saw the play. Pilot on the return. Makes a good move and gets it across the 35. So the Colts hold on defense. They get it back up seven. Fox NFL Sunday is brought to you by Hummer. Check out the H2. Hummer like nothing else. <laughs> the field judge is saying, look, I was doing somersaults when that pass was thrown. I'd give him a 9.7 on that one. He wasn't the only one that had a look at it. We'll give you another chance at that replay. After the first play from the Colts, who lead it by seven. And a quick throw to Stokely. Brandon gets it out to the 45 and just beyond a gain of nine. And somebody on the sideline obviously yelled fire as the ref did his top drop and roll. Yeah, there was a back judge, however, Scott Helverson back here that did have a good look at it. And he was the one who actually signaled that it was an uncatchable ball. So it wasn't like there wasn't anybody that was watching the play. Second down and a yard for the Colts. And they hand it off to Edger and James. He doesn't get it. About a half yard shy of a first down. Just a huge stop, though, on that last one by the Colts defense. There they were in a situation where they were defending against Green Bay coming down and tying up the score. But Brandon Stokely down. That's on the sideline. Getting looked at. He was the one that tried that leaping try for a first down two plays ago. Well, this is a big third down. This offensive line is not a big, powerful, strong offensive line that moves people, but they're going to need to here. It's a short one yard to go, and it's Edger and James. He did not get it. I think he lost yardage. They're going to mark him back all the way at the 46, which is a full yard shy of a first down. And I think what happens is you start... You start pulling offensive linemen on third and short, and usually a defense then will get penetration. And that's what happened. This offense really does its best job when it blocks on angles. And you see 64 Rick DeMoling pull, but they got pressure up front, and that is really demoralizing for an offensive unit on, on second and short and unable to convert with two opportunities. Really a great play by Hannibal Navies on that one, coming off and making that good solid tackle. Despite that grotesque dislocation, Chapman is back waiting for the punt. That punt is hit that way by design. Hunter Smith learned it from Darren Bennett of the San Diego Chargers where he tilts the nose of the football down and kicks it end over end. And it checked up. It's going to be marked at the 21-yard line, which is where Green Bay will take over. So the Packers get it right back. They get a three and out from their defense. And they can now go over sit, talk, or watch this offense. Favre drops it off. Amon Green. And Green has a Green Bay first down. And now Brett Favre grabs the back of his left leg as we welcome you to Indianapolis a new audience joining us you have missed fireworks really from the beginning well, we've already seen Brett Favre he's playing with what appears to be a sore left shoulder now he's grabbing his leg grabbing his hamstring that may be a factor as we go down the stretch because they have been moving the pocket with him a little bit 
Indianapolis up by seven. Gingerly, Brett Favre drops back to throw as he has made his 192nd consecutive start here today during the regular season, and he can't move around at all. No, and this Dwight Freeney here is what you're going to see, the knee right to the back of the leg. But really, that's good news, the fact that it's a bruise and not a pulled hamstring. We saw Mark Brunel last week having to come out of the game with a pulled hamstring, a bruise you can live with. Well, unless he's unable to move outside the pocket, a lot of their plays have come with him outside the tackles on the move. On second down and eight, nice catch, one-arm grab by Driver for a first down. As a means of trying to catch you up to date as to where we are right now, this has been an unbelievable offensive assault on each side. Each team scored the first two times they had it. Stokely, Wayne, Mungro getting in on the action. Javon Walker, a three-touchdown day. Donald Driver with a Cirque du Soleil touchdown at the far end to make it a seven-point game. These two teams, one and one, coming into this afternoon's game. First down, Packers. Passes on a laser line, and it's ripped out. They're calling it a completion fumble. Javon Walker couldn't hang on, and the Colts take over. David knocked it away, and Nick Harper came up with a ball. How about this for a play for a rookie? Make the catch. He's on the ground and just strip it right away. We saw Nick Harper make a play like that, stealing the ball away from Derek Mason a week ago, and now the rookie, Jason David, comes back and does it here. Well, that clearly was on the ground. I mean, it, it, his knee was not on the turf, but they're gonna... And Green Bay recognizes that. They're not gonna challenge the call, and it's a good non-challenge by Green Bay. Ball clearly out. A big play, because you could tell that Indianapolis was clearly on their heels and had not been able to stop Green Bay for most of this second half. Javon Walker, who has had a brilliant game, had it ripped away by Jason David. And then Harper, who had that huge interception last week at Tennessee, taking it away from Mason, comes up with the loose ball. Here's Edger and James, forced out by Hawthorne. Gain of five. We go back a week ago. Play started from the two. Amon Green was hit and hit hard by Erlacher. The ball came out. Brown recovered. There's some controversy as to whether that was an illegal block in the back by Erlacher on far, but Brown went down. 95 yards for the fumble return for the touchdown. That 14-point swing, the Packers will tell you, cost them a win at home over Chicago. Second down and five here for Indy. anything all day first down Indianapolis and let's not forget last week Nick Harper coming up with the big interception that secured their victory last week and right now what you're seeing of the Indianapolis Colts is they're gonna start milking this clock down they were able to pick up five yards on first down with Edger and James right now for Peyton Manning it's all about completions it's all about keeping this clock running as you keep an eye on the play clock they'll run this thing down as much as they can without losing the momentum that they currently have. On first down, they give to James, and he is met in the backfield. Cletius Hunt was in there, as was Baja Villamila. And it just has to suck all the life right out of this Green Bay Packers defense. They do their job. They make this big stop on third and one, get the ball back. You complete a pass up to your hottest receiver, Javon Walker, and he just has it stripped right away. And now all of a sudden you're back out on the field trying to stop Peyton again. Well, and what Peyton Manning realizes is that they are now in field goal position. If they do nothing else, they try to come away with three points. It's then a two-possession game for Green Bay. Second down and 13, they play action and throw. Wayne again. What a day for Reggie Wayne, and he is fast becoming a weapon for Peyton Manning 
along the lines of the good 1A receivers. Reggie Wayne is making his name this year in the NFL. And Troy, we talked about the arm strength of Brett Favre, but how about some of these throws that Peyton Manning's making? Play action away, so he's all the way on this side of the field, and basically throwing a deep out on the other side has the arm strength to get it in there underneath the coverage. I got to tell you, my hat's off to Tom Moore. I mean, they're in a position to kick a field goal and go up by 10, and yet he still has the confidence and the belief in Peyton Manning, as he should, to continue to let this guy throw the football. You also have to like the way Reggie Wayne came back to get that ball with the defender. I believe it was Hawthorne right there. Wayne went and got it, made the catch, first and goal for the Colts, and they have to use a timeout up by seven. The combination that just gave the Colts exactly what they needed back on their heels. Green Bay moving the ball. Green Bay's dominated this second half. But it was Jason David who ripped it away from Javon Walker. And now the Colts have taken it inside the 10-yard line. They have a first and goal with 3.11 left. Joe, you got to start making a decision as to whether you're going to burn timeouts and try to keep as much time on the clock, and that's what they decide to do. Green Bay uses its first timeout here in this second half. Let's go back to that key play that they'll be talking about all week, the strip by Jason David. The only thing that could have been called in my mind was that his forward progress had been stopped However, I'm told that that is not a challengeable play. So even if they had challenged that one, it would not have been allowed. So forward progress, a judgment call by the officials. They had not blown the whistle. And so the turnover allowed. It's a potentially disappointing ending to a tremendous day for Javon Walker as the Packers have a receiver go over 200 yards for the first time since Don Beebe did it back in 96. 11 catches, three touchdowns, but one key fumble. AGB on the sideline, second down and goal. Blitz coming from the Packers. Edron James runs into a wall. That'll bring up third and goal. And the Packers will use another timeout. NFL next week. We will be at Lambeau Field for the 2-1 and one Giants coming off their win over Cleveland, taking on the Green Bay Packers, and they may need that game. Facing a 1-2 and two starter, the Falcons and the Panthers. The Falcons have started 3-0. and oh, Hard to believe that they ended up winning that game 6-3 to three today over the Arizona Cardinals, that the Atlanta offense couldn't come up with more than that. It's going to be third and goal here for the Colts. Yeah, and you kind of wonder, if you're the Indianapolis Colts, do you throw the ball and try to get the touchdown that way, or are you content trying to get three points and make it a ten-point game? Because if you run the ball, then you force Green Bay to take another timeout yeah. if, if you don't make it into the end zone for the touchdown. You know, I know you have Peyton Manning, and he's red hot, and everything's going great today, but I just have to line up and take this field goal. You have... The best kicker in the league, a guy who did not miss this season ago, and you've got to think with a 10-point lead and 256, the game's over. But we've seen him throw it on this drive already, so who knows? 256 remaining. A timeout left for Green Bay, and then obviously the two-minute warning. is incomplete the flag came in late and now another one comes in in the secondary in the area of Marvin Harrison well I think the first one Peyton Manning used the hard count brilliantly and it looked as if they were able to draw the Packers off sides then there may have been contact in the end zone on the pass if there is 
and it's pass interference in there the end zone. There were two fouls by the defense on the play. Offside, number 99. This is that huge. penalty's declined. There was also holding, number 31. That penalty's accepted. Half the distance to the goal. Automatic first down. The automatic first down is the killer in that penalty for the Green Bay Packers. And you can only use that hard count down there on the goal line at home. Credit being at home here in Indianapolis in the dome to use a hard count on third and goal to draw him off sides. Peyton Manning then realizing he's got a free play. He takes a shot. He gets contact and it's first and goal. The last two times the Colts have come to the line. We've had the microphones open down there, but you don't hear Peyton Manning screaming and moving guys around. He's been quiet. Almost a silent count as Edgerin James tries to fight his way in, and they are going to mark him down short of the goal line. You know, this is one of those strange situations defensively that every time you make a stop, you're almost working against yourself. You're having to take time out. You're having to take time off the clock. In all likelihood, you're going to end up having to have two scores anyway, a touchdown and an onside kick and get it again. And you obviously need a little time to try and do that. So now 240 remaining. And Mike Sherman called the officials over. So far, the Green Bay Packers have not called their final timeout. There was no challenge on the play. No challenge on the play. Second down. I'm not so sure Mike Sherman was trying to say that they had scored. I don't know if he's trying to get the ball back. I'm not sure exactly what the communication is, but we saw Tony Dungy spreading his hands apart as though there was about a foot left before they were able to get into the end zone. Obviously, they want to score a touchdown here, but at the same time, they would love to take as much time off the clock as they possibly can. Well, the guy who brings the water. I will start it on the whistle, 240. Because Green Bay didn't use a timeout, they will wind the game clock. Started at 240. They were ready to do it here, but the guy who brings the water into the huddle was still out on the field. So it's second down and goal. They'll wind the clock, and Green Bay will at least think about using their final timeout. How <laughs> strange would that have been to have a coach wanting to challenge? Obviously, this is a booth review situation, but wanting to challenge to give the other team a touchdown. Well, it's outside two minutes, so they could have they could have challenged, and we'll take another look at that play just to get one more peek and see if indeed Edron James got in. They're saying he's down right there, there. Right there. And there's no doubt that Edron James did not get in. Play. And, and the play clock will be reset to 40 seconds because this game the game was mistakenly stopped and the play clock should have been 40. The clock will start on my whistle. No timeouts were charged. Green Bay has one remaining timeout. And I'm not real sure why Peyton has him at the line right now. I would be taking as much time off this as possible. They've got 40 seconds on the play clock, and they're running a play. I don't think he realizes it. Oh, he does now. There's no reason to snap There's this no ball. reason, and you don't want him sitting in their stance either and flinching. This is very strange. The play clock and the game clock just a little off. Play clock a little ahead as we approach the two-minute run. I think Peyton realizes what's happened. He's trying to keep him as calm as possible just so he can milk this clock down. He did leave him in that stance a long time, but these guys have trained for this and practiced for this a lot. And I believe that if you split hairs here, the play clock expired before the two-minute warning, and therefore that'll be a five-yard penalty. I agree, Joe. I thought it was a one-second second difference. There is no foul for delay of game because there were 40 seconds, and we came down to the two-minute warning. Therefore, we stopped for the two-minute warning with no foul. Let me tell you what Peyton Manning was doing there. He was trying to make them believe that he was up there going to run that play so they wouldn't call a timeout. And he just fooled him. He absolutely fooled him. Two minutes remain here in Indianapolis. 
Tonight, it's a television event with the biggest acts in music and the hottest trends in fashion. Join Beyonce, Usher, and more for a celebration of style and sound as Dennis Leary hosts Fashion Rocks following The Simpsons. Coming up next, except on the West Coast. So on that previous play, even though the two clocks were off a bit and they threw a flag, they picked it up. There's no penalty. The ball is still right outside the goal line and it's second out and goal. A hand to James and Edger and James still can't get in. And now the Packers can use their final timeout before third and goal. Well, it's pretty safe to say that after this ball game, the Colts next week will be working on some short yardage situations. They have they have failed on a number of occasions today. In short yardage, failing to pick up first downs. Now they've been down here and they've been un unable to punch it into the end zone. Good news and bad news here. The good news is they're stopping on the bad news. They had to burn their last time out and Clock's going to keep continue to run down, and you're going to have less time, and you still have to have the ball twice. So essentially, the Colts would have to never get the ball back again anyway, and you'd have to have two scores. The only difference, obviously, if they hold them here, it's a 10-point game, and you can go touchdown field goal. So it'll be third and goal with a minute 55 remaining. Green Bay out of timeouts and trailing by seven. in for the score and that one hurts Favre's body hurts and that hurts on the scoreboard with the extra point coming up trying to make it a 14 point game again yeah Joe and they went back to really what they do best in the running game and that's the stretch play they've been trying to run over Jeff Saturday and their guard in the A gaps this time they go to the stretch play off tackle Easy touchdown. But just a dream scenario for the Colts there at the end. They get the touchdown. They run the clock. They burn all of Green Bay's timeouts. Just handled perfectly. And I still believe that Peyton Manning was putting on an act up there. He wanted Mike Sherman to believe that he was going to run a play despite what was happening with the clocks and make a mistake. And that acting job burned off a key 40 seconds. Vanderjet to make it a 14-point game. 45-31. And the Indianapolis Colts are staring at a 2-1 and one start while the Packers 1-2 and two unless they pull off the miraculous. We came on the air talking about the quarterbacks and about this matchup between the Colts and the Packers. And we have not been disappointed in any way. And I'm sure you haven't either watching this game and the matchup between Favre and Manning. Their numbers are fantastic. Well, and you just don't know how many opportunities you get to see these two guys play against each other. In all likelihood, this will be the last time that they go head-to-head -head unless they both happen to end up playing against each other in a Super Bowl. But what a great game between these two guys and what a great performance by each of them. I'll tell you, I think there's a big story going on in Seattle right now as well. That team going out on the road and winning their first two games. They won only two games all last year on the road and turn around and just blow out San Francisco today. That's a talented bunch there as well. First shutout of the 49ers in 77 in a game against Atlanta. They lose 34 to nothing to Seattle. And many people pick Seattle to win that NFC West. And so far, they're only challenged the Rams who blew a late lead today. And the Seahawks have started 3-0. and It looks like Doug Peterson's going to come in the game for Brett Favre, who I guess they're feeling like at this point, why risk further injury with that thigh? A swift kick by Vanderjet. And it's Henderson on the return, his second of the day. Can't get to the 40. And it will be Peterson coming out with this last gasp for the Green Bay offense. We go back to that play that injured the back of the left leg by far, the right knee of Freeney jamming into his hamstring. A minute 40 remaining on the clock. Just 
Rangers of all sights seeing Brett Favre on the sideline. Dumped off to Fisher. Tony Fisher is a yard shy of a first down, a gain of nine. A coach's decision, left hamstring tightness on the part of Favre. Well, and Doug Peterson, who only had two pass attempts last year, now he gets a chance to get some playing time, and you never know. A first down for Green Bay. Bubba Franks with a first down at the 45, a gain of eight. You just never know. I mean, Brett Favre, is, he's been the Iron Man. He's been there each and every every game, practice, every year, but you never know. So these are valuable snaps that Peterson gets a chance to take. What a catch by Ferguson. And he's brought down with another Green Bay first down. That was all Robert Ferguson reaching behind him and grabbing that basically with one arm. Peterson drops it off for Fisher inside the 30 with 42 41 seconds remaining and I'll tell you what they turned Robert Ferguson wide open up the sideline if Doug Peterson had seen it that's a touchdown and you can't get too soft if you're Indianapolis Donald driver that's incomplete he did not get both feet down here's that play with Robert Ferguson Donald Strickland just lets him go by him and not much time on the clock, obviously, but if they get a quick score and an onside kick, they're right back in it. Well, and now you have to take your shot in the end zone. I mean, there's it's enough dinking and dunking because you still have to have an onside kick and a couple of Hail Marys, hopefully. So everything from this point on, in my opinion, has to be thrown into the end zone. Third down and four. 28 seconds to go. No timeouts left for the Packers. is picked off and that'll end the day here in Indianapolis it was David Thornton and Thornton gets his first of the season the Packers will start one and two the Colts two and one and just to finish up one other point they took three yards officially away from Javon Walker to knock him down to 198 on the day so he has a great day through the air he doesn't get to the 200 yard plateau but he had that catch and fumble that cost the Packers what looked to be their real good chance late to draw even again. They were trailing by seven at the time. Yeah, at that time, I mean, really Indianapolis defensively really looked nervous and on their heels, and Green Bay had done a great job in that second half of moving the football and getting some points, and they were only down seven at that time, and there was no reason to believe that Indianapolis, if Javon doesn't fumble it, was going to be able to stop them. What a show, though, today. We opened the day debating who was the best quarterback in the NFL, and Peyton Manning certainly made his case today. He was absolutely perfect. And if the last piece is a championship for Peyton Manning, I wonder if with a few changes defensively, if this Indianapolis club will ride to a Super Bowl on the strength of Manning and Harrison and Edger and James. It's a victory for the Indianapolis Colts. They are now two and one, and let's go down to Pam Oliver. All right, Joe, here with Peyton Manning. Peyton, tremendous effort offensively for you guys today. Talk about what that was like in such a shootout with Brett Favre. Well, we knew we were going to have to score some points when you play against the Green Bay Packers, and we came out with a very um, aggressive game plan to throw the football, to kind of use that to set up the run. Uh, took us a while to set up the run. We kept throwing it so well, and uh, it was a great game plan on the coach's part. Wonderful job. Thanks a lot. Thanks. Let's go back up to Joe. All right, now thanks to Peyton Manning for stopping by. It almost took him a half to set up the run. One pass after another, and a 14-point win for the Colts. We'll come back and wrap up the day here in Indianapolis after this. A fun afternoon in football for the Indianapolis Colts as they come away with the victory. A 14-point win over Green Bay. We give you our UPS leaderboard. UPS delivers a chance to win the ultimate home football experience. Just log on to FoxSports.com.